is the Glass Cannon Network. old-fashioned but I like my coffee black I like my beer ice cold I like hearing myself in my headphones I like my steak medium rare and I like my glass cannon live glass cannon is better on Twitch. live we're here <sighs> if there was a crowd right now we would be able to hear them and they'd be going crazy it was really weird not hearing it the was crowd weird. go wild I was like what, what happened? Or just Are we like not a on? chorus of booze like last time. Is this time. thing on? Yeah. Thanks to Troy. Way, yeah. less, way less panties being thrown. <laughs> <laughs> Far I mean, less panties being thrown. I, for one, am Sadly. grateful. It's weird without the panties. I agree, Troy. <laughs> not no panties, but just less. <laughs> I, for um, one, am grateful that we don't have to suffer through some new Portman Joe like we do in every every new city. Uh, I wonder what? what they're chanting in the chat. Is it Suffer? Like suffer? <laughs> They were the changing the YouTube show for me. Joe last night <laughs> for you. in chat. Yeah, yeah, Just YouTube funny. Joe. YouTube Joe. YouTube Joe. <laughs> YouTube Joe. <laughs> uh, look at us, huh? I can't remember the last time we did this uh, with the 18 of us. I can't count. It's um, been a minute. It's been a hot minute. We did this like weeks and weeks and weeks in a row after, you know, a couple months after Giant Slayer ended and long before uh, Gatewalkers began. We This was like our stopgap thing. We got to play so much Strange Aeons and then we went back to doing it on tour and it just, we don't play that much anymore. And we took January and February off. We just got back into it in Toronto and I said this year, I was like, come hell or high water, I want to play some more online and just try to flesh this story out, get back into it. So it, it kind of complements what we do on the road. And there's no better time than right now, because less than a week from now, we're going to be back on the road. We're in Kansas City on Thursday night uh, at the Madrid Theater. There are plenty of tickets left. It's a huge place. Uh, but come on, Kansas City. Come on out. We had so many people in St. Louis last time. Let's at least get those uh, that St. Louis crowd there. And then we're in all Austin Saturday night, and as of this morning, big ass theater, bigger than Toronto, and there's only 31 tickets left in Austin. Uh, so wow. that is going to be Toronto was huge. That was the biggest theater I've been in that we yeah. played. Both of these theaters are bigger, and Austin is this close to selling out. So. Oh my god! Would it would it be our biggest crowd in Texas? If we if we, uh, if we yes. let's say if it stays right where it is right now, would that be it? Would be the crowd? biggest crowd to ever gather in Texas for anything. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I'm pretty sure. Bold statement. Bold. I'm sure you've done your research. <laughs> yes, I mean, I'm just I'm spitballing. That seems about right. <laughs> um, so come on out. I, those 31 holdouts. We would love to see you. If you're anywhere in Texas, just make the drive. Uh, yeah. It'll be worthwhile. Uh, I'm, I mean, we're gonna be. I'm gonna be so fat on stage after just. I've been like really, really good, and then I'm just gonna eat like a fucking pig in Kansas City, <laughs> and then just roll right into Franklin's, eat more, and we come on stage just rolling onto stage. But I can't wait. It's gonna be a very gassy show. Uh, oh gosh. <laughs> I'll need those. I, I'll need those panties on stage in case I need to change midway through. You're just gonna have the beef sweats, like just early, <laughs> like early beef sweats. It's hot enough great. under the lights, but it's yeah. gonna be bad after the barbecue we get. Oh boy! There's like, the title of the episode right there. <laughs> we don't even have to do the show. We know what it is. <laughs> uh, no, so yeah, I mean, I hope you can join us next week. But if you can't join us next week, tickets are on sale for every show throughout the rest of the year, with the exception of Philly, which is going on sale. Uh, possibly next week. I'll just stay tuned to social media. Listen to Cannon Bar. I'll let you know when those Philly tickets are going to go on sale. But uh, Helium Comedy Club during Gen Con, there's 20 something tickets left for that. There's about 26 tickets left for St. Paul. A lot of these shows are selling out. Uh, we're really glad we got to put these tickets up early. It makes a big, big difference. And in fact, we're going to be running a giveaway in chat. McD will be throwing the link up pretty soon. You can enter to win two tickets to any show through the rest of the year. Uh, you Two tickets, a pair of tickets we're going to give 
giveaway tonight uh, in the chat. Uh, stay tuned. We'll throw the link up there and you can uh, submit to win. And then we'll contact you and be like, what show you want to go to? And then you'll be like, well, I live in England. So I just, I was, I felt like I should enter the giveaway, even though I have no way of coming. <laughs> And then we won't give anybody tickets. So, <laughs> how was everybody's we day? I went one, bowling. I it was awesome, but not really. You guys like bowling? I've been bowling in forever. It was a blast. Sorry, you just skipped. <laughs> at least to me. Yeah. Really? No yeah. one did yeah. hear. Like, like we heard nothing, and then all of a sudden we we're just like, "You guys you like, like bowling?" bowling? <laughs> That's all I heard. Too. Did you pause for ten seconds and then ask us about bowling? Is that what happened? <laughs> no, I, I said a lot of stuff. I guess they missed it. <laughs> did anybody hear about the giveaway? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we heard, heard about the, the giveaway. giveaway. Okay. And you, you were like talking about the giveaway, and you were like, "Pick any show you want. If you're in England, yeah, well, then we you know we give tickets." You yeah, guys no, like I like bowling. <laughs> it was just like, it was yeah. very strange. I read a couple lines from this manifesto I found online, and then I went straight into bowling. Uh, so I didn't miss anything. Uh, but yeah, I went bowling today with the kids, and it was it was great. I hadn't been Bowl bowling since we were in Indianapolis, and we went bowling like the night before Gen Con, which was a blast. But bowling uh, is the best. It is just, the best. It's just great. And I never uh, used the what you would call the the big balls uh, until I was in my twenties, because in Massachusetts. <laughs> I know. Everybody oh. have a big laugh. <laughs> Is that what they call that? The professional bowlers? Is yeah, well, they... in Massachusetts, and we've talked about this ad yes. nauseum, I'm sure, on the show oh, before. Oh, I know it's what you're saying. It's candle pin bowling. It's okay. like a shot put. Oh, yeah. I thought you were saying like oh. a size 15 ball. Like, yeah. I, I was yes. like, what are you talking about? I was like, there's some sort of law in Massachusetts that doesn't let minors use like a certain yeah. size bowling. I finally ball. got up to the 12 pounder. No, I, uh, <laughs> I, 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 it still feels new to me. I've bowled uh, at least 100 times more with candle pin bowling than I have what you would just call bowling um but uh it's <laughs> what fun. do you call candle pin bowling do you just call it bowling i call that bowling and then i call this bowling with the big balls Sorry, did you t did you tie <laughs> travel? that's so ridiculous <laughs> what do you call you just did you call time travel when you moved from massachusetts were you in the 1920s and now you came they don't we don't have the big balls in massachusetts what? What are you talking there are about? no lanes there's with no big, big balls. balls in massachusetts no, there's no big balls. you heard it from massachusetts a son of massachusetts yeah no, no big balls it's all the little balls in massachusetts <laughs> little balls are good no, if you want to go good. bowling in Eastern Mass, you got to do Candlepin. Yeah, it's all I Candlepin. I didn't know yeah. that. I, did, I never like... even saw I just saw like Tom and Jerry bowling. I'm like, that's silly. That's not real. Look at Tom and Jerry bowling with those silly balls. <laughs> I, never I don't saw think it. I've been Candlepin bowling and it doesn't make much sense to me. I feel like it would just, like, especially with a bunch of meathead idiot Eastern Massachusetts dudes. Like, how dare you? Don't oh, yeah, you you'd rather go would... with the educated elites of Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's, it's equally the same. Friends. If you had Candlepin bowling there, it's the same thing. Wouldn't it? Don't they? throw it so hard they just break shit like it, it, it's so little like they throw it hard damn. and you can put some spin on it but it's it's a different game you get three balls to knock them all down uh one ball is a strike two balls if you knock them all down is a is a spare it's it's a different game it's right? three balls it's a more fun it's not, shitty it's spare. not the size of the ball it's how you use it yeah <laughs> well so i don't want to say it i've Have never I... seen candle pin bowl i just googled it that really? that's so funny it looks silly it's I... how dare you have I ever asked you about your, is it, does that give you more skill with skee-ball? Are you a good skee-ball oh. player? I'm a pretty good skee-ball player. I'm, I'm pretty good at all games of chance. Um, but, uh, <laughs> my... Is skee-ball a game of chance? <laughs> pretty sure, sure. <laughs> I'm all pretty sure these are games in of Vegas. Skee-ball. I'll play it. <laughs> <laughs> Just throwing it backwards over here. <laughs> Woo! Hookshot. <laughs> <laughs> Hook oh, shot. They had this great. Uh, they had this great game at the arcade today, and I mean, it was was we went to the arcade afterwards as well. I mean, it's huge. I call it a, a game. It was like uh, the size of two, uh, like hundred and twenty inch TVs, just enormous. It was called dodgeball. It was three tokens, and you just hucked balls at targets. And the to it was all these people like this, and it would light up, and you'd have to hit them with the dodgeball. It was great. Like SWAT team training. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> um, but anyways, my dad was a big candle pin bowler and he was like, he would, he was very close to being on TV for it. And so growing up Saturday morning, like when the cartoons ended, it was candle pin bowling was on TV. And my dad was like, he was really good. And he just was like, I don't want to be a TV bowler, but I got into it cause I got into leagues. He was doing leagues and, uh, yeah, candle pin bowling is the best. But Can the I big ask balls a classic Matthew clarification question? Yes. 
Why exactly would one want to be a great candle pin bowler, but not a TV candle pin bowler? <laughs> because that's like you gotta you gotta go on the the circuit. You're you're part of the life. Oh, you're it like touring life. and stuff. You're, you're away getting, from home. Yeah, you're sleeping with bowling hookers. It's a whole lifestyle. You don't <laughs> want to have to deal with that. Hookers. But they're they're Eastern Mass. They're smaller. The hookers are smaller. Right. There. <laughs> and you get three of them. And you get three chances. <laughs> <instead of> two. <laughs> But uh, yeah, oh. made, made me made me a little homesick um, to be able can to. We, can go we do back this and, in Boston like, before the Boston show? Can you want to do, do some candle yeah. pin bowling, dude? Treehouse right to candle pin bowling, right to some old timey lane. That sounds like a get a couple for Sam Oktoberfests. <laughs> Play a little candle oh no! Pin oh bowling. no! He's gonna start saying rum, guys. Careful, he's gonna start saying rum <laughs> yeah, instead of room. Yeah, talk funny. <laughs> I talk funny. Did anybody else bowl today? <laughs> I didn't no. happen guess in bowl. to bowl today. No, no I, I made something, a very common dish that uh, I've never made before. Today. Ah, macaroni I made, and cheese? I, made, I cooked, st stress, stressing out trying to get it done before this stream, I cooked a chicken marsala oh. for the first time oh. at home. That's got a little Cook, wine in there, right? Cooked down the wine sauce. I didn't mm -hmm. even know Marsala was an actual wine. I thought it was like a, a city in Italy or something. Mm -hmm. They were like, uh, I had to go, I went to the liquor store and I went up to the guy and I was like, I want to make something with, I want to make chicken Marsala. Uh, wh where is that in, in a wine store? <laughs> like, I don't even know where to look. <laughs> uh, yeah, and he took me over. So what is Marsala? Is it like a dessert wine? Is it like a, like a super sweet wine? Does anybody I, ever just drink Marsala or do you only cook I've with never, it? I've never, I've only eaten it in chicken Marsala. It's a yeah. fortified wine. So, so it's yeah. kind of like it's a fortified. vermouth or a... Uh, it's Sicilian, isn't it? You didn't try a little bit when you were cooking? You, yeah, didn't... you didn't have a little side, when side I say, John of Marsala? When I say I had to cook it flawlessly with no mistakes in order for this stream to start on time. Like I was like, <laughs> ah! like I had no time to dick around. So yeah, but I still have the bottle right out there and I will try it. I will try it. I'm just yeah. imagining you gamifying cooking dinner. <laughs> I was, I was, I was like cutting Brussels sprouts. I was like, how many seconds per sprout? Did like, you platinum? Using? Did you platinum cooking the chicken marsala? Dude, I crushed it. Like I am like ready to go, ready to play, ready to hang out. Like 40 minutes ago, I was just like, you know, cooking down a reduction of a mushroom sauce. Like Did you it eat was it? it was Did intense. Did you get to eat? Dinner? Yeah, I ate oh. it. I mean, I shoved it in my face, burnt my tongue. It was delicious. <laughs> huh. Uh so yeah, that was my that was my highlight today. The cooking of a new dish. Um Sydney, did you cook a new dish today? No, just an old one. I made a big old michelada. I knew yeah. you had yeah. a michelada. Yeah. yeah. The over under on you having a michelada for this stream was <laughs> the minus 260. <laughs> minus 260. I'm putting money in your pockets when you bet on me having a michelada. Actually, at this point, no, I'm I'm not. It's I'm no. going to have a michelada. The over under is a set at one and a half. So like you have to have two. And even I think two of them is still at minus 110. Uh, I used the uh, chamoy, the like fruit hot sauce chamoy sauce. I finally got that, put it on the rim. So I really did it up this time. Glenn sure. Bob says, that just looks like a jar of marinara. <laughs> it, <laughs> it looks like you're just sucking in marinara just took the label of a, of a jar of ragu. <laughs> oh, sweet steel <laughs> straw, bro. Thank you. Good for nice. the environment. Yeah. Yeah. Look at you. Did you drive your Prius to the ragu <laughs> store? I knew he was going to lay in on you with this. <laughs> Look at old Sydney saving the environment one straw at a time. All right. All right. <laughs> Does anybody ever worry about getting the full inside of a steel straw actually clean? They, I give, you, they, they I'm give, like, give you little brushes. You got to use a yeah. brush. Oh, oh, is there brushes that, oh, I yeah. didn't know Yeah, that. yeah you get one of these, James. Like, uh, exactly. Oh, well, well, that right next well, to you right That's now. for his wheat. Like, yeah, this is from a, my pipe. I uh, know. <laughs> Carrie Haley, uh, years ago, I made fun of one of the many things I made fun of Portland for is that they don't give you fucking straws. So she gave me a straw and I keep it right next to my desk oh, so I can well, do this from time to time. There you go. That's kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> you like that, Matthew? <laughs> Faster. Kate loves Faster. it. Kate loves it. God, I just love these stupid jokes. God. Watch this. Whoa! <laughs> Kate, wine, bowling, environment. Oh, what do you got? No, no, I, I did not bowl today. Uh, I don't really like bowling because nails, and then yep. also my back is bad. But maybe candle pin bowling would be fine. Um, sure. I don't know if you can tell. I gave myself a little haircut today. <laughs> my bangs are a little crooked. Really? Um, I didn't want to say anything. Looked it looked great. Really, <laughs> it looked it great looks to really me. Really good. Thought it looked a little crooked. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Chat, go off about Kate's haircut. <laughs> you uh, gave yourself a yeah. haircut. So how wait, you how do, do you give yourself a haircut? Just with a mirror and a pair of shears, and that—that's it. Uh, you just so go I to have town? these scissors, and in the front's easy. You just like 
make it shorter. But that's what you fucked up. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh. That's what well, you said. No, no, right? well, no, no you, you haven't seen the back. You're only seeing the front. Uh, the back was shaggy too. And what I do there is I grab it while, while, while I can see it. Mm-hmm. And then I need to turn my head in order to cut. So then I can't see. So I just like start cutting <laughs> like vibes, you know? Okay. So, do you, do you blindly, use like you'd, a mirror and a mirror situation? I for should the get back? another mirror so I don't have to do that. But no, I just, I try to guess. And then I just boop, 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 snip, 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 close my eyes. Do you ever consider paying someone else to do it for you? I usually do. (laughs) Someone who can see the back of your head while they're doing it? The person that I go to is in the city. So I have to go all the way into the city and just didn't have time. So I did it myself today. Well, there it is. Kate cut her own hair. Nice. (laughs) Because she cares about the environment. Yeah. (laughs) One sea turtle saved. (laughs) Matthew, you strike me as a gentleman whose parents used a floby on them during childhood. <laughs> remember the floby? I, I remember no the floby. I have no idea what that is. The floby? Really? You don't know what the floby is? No, you do. You to just, date the floby? You just don't know the name. You know what it is. It's what is uh, it? somebody oh. invented this. It's like a. It cuts your hair. You just hook it up to it's an ordinary vacuum, vacuum it's a cleaner. It's a peel thing. I think. It's a vacuum. It it's sucks vacuum the hair and chops it in a tube so it's. Yep. Even. Oh, is this like an infomercial? I'm like, oh gosh, oh, this, yeah. web- this website is wonderful. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, it's still there. Floby Factory Direct. You can buy no. it. Floby, we'll s- come sponsor They're us. They're expensive. The cheapest one is eighty dollars. Look at the dude modeling it. It looks like Randy Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> His shirt is like all dirty. No, that's the shirt. It's like oh, a pattern. It looks dirty. <laughs> um, <laughs> the guy no. modeling it looks like he's straight out of 1982 and he's just got a vacuum on his head like this. <laughs> uh, for much of my childhood, I went to the Italian barber shop in my hometown. Shocker. Uh, and where they had, it was all old Italian guys and they had pic- like, you know, the team portraits of the various Italian national soccer teams on the walls. This is like lighting the walls up and, and down. And uh, gangsters. And then I realized at a certain point he was cutting my hair so that like you could only part it and slick it back and if you didn't do that it was just a diagonal line across my forehead <laughs> so i i stopped I, like at a certain point i achieved consciousness and i uh, stopped going there and i just like i it scarred me because then i for a while i just got crew cuts like I, I voluntarily got crew cuts as a child in my imagination this barber shop also doubled as a italian bakery and uh deli there was a guy carving. It was a guy carving meats anywhere on the premises. No, 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 no. It's New Jersey. You don't need anything to double. There's plenty of Italian <laughs> Italian businesses down the road. Down the road. So you can pick up some. Uh, what's it called? What's the meat that has that you put in an Italian sub? The gabagool. Thank no. It's gabagool. Yeah, Capicola. Capicola. The gabagool. You get the gabagool next you door. Get the gabagool. You, get you get the gabagool. Pick up some stringing for your ma. <laughs> there actually, there actually was a pastry shop and a and a meat market. And on the same block. Mm. I remember the meat market. <laughs> Skid, you remember the meat market? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, the, I like that place, but it's such a meat market. <laughs> Skid, how was your Saturday? Did you go for a leisurely stroll? I didn't do anything. I talked to a realtor and watched some basketball. That's basically it. That's, yeah, some good uh, basketball on. NBA that's some playoffs. some businessman stuff. Yeah. Yep. That's right. Yeah, talk Skid, to- I... Obviously, I know you're a, a big Nuggets fan. Do you uh, support the? If we were talking about soccer, you'd be a, a supporter. Do you support the New York Knicks? Is that like uh, a, a franchise that you kind of support? I don't. I don't dissupport them. Okay. I, I, you know, it's actually because when Nick Lowe and I went a couple of weeks ago, it was really fun. I've never been in town really. We were talking about this when they've actually been good, and it was <laughs> it was really exciting. It was it was awesome being in the garden like when. The Knicks were good and all these celebrities in there and everything. So, yeah, I mean, I will, I'll sort of passively root for them. It's, it's fine if they win. It's like passively rooting for like a three legged dog at this point. Yeah. I mean, like, of course you, why, why, why wouldn't you? Also, I just want John Knicks. McEnroe to be happy because I've never seen that either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Very exciting time of year. We got NHL playoffs, we got NBA playoffs, and we have Glass Cannon live. So thank you for spending your Saturday with us. Uh, Hopefully we'll see you next week in Kansas shitty or Austin. Uh, And then after that, I can't remember the next place, but it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Vancouver, (laughs) Vancouver. Vancouver. St. Paul, and then Denver and Nashville. Man, we're going to have such a fun time. I can't wait. I have purchased no less 
than 17 flights in the past month. <laughs> yes, yes, I know. Yeah, it's a lot of flights. <laughs> a lot of flights. I'm doing the books and I'm like, that's a lot of money out. <laughs> <laughs> Not a whole lot in. Is these shows haven't happened yet. City. <laughs> <laughs> I hope people come to these shows. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're, we're definitely investing something in them. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to be a major loss for the company. <laughs> oh, you know, I said that St. Paul and, and Helium's almost sold out. Austin, Vancouver as well. Vancouver is so, uh, like tons of tickets sold for Vancouver, well over... Uh, well, almost 300. So that one's almost Well, hold on. Take well. a look at this. I can just do this live. Just be like, boom. Boom. Ooh. I mean, Ooh. you can just see oh, yeah. what's coming, baby. Kansas City, Austin, Vancouver, St. Paul, Denver. 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 Nashville. I don't Indianapolis, even know. Indianapolis, Boston, Portland, LA, and Philly. Love it. When is yeah. Philly going on sale, Troy? You said what's it. The, you weren't I, listening. I think it's next week. Okay. Um, I wanted an exact day. That's all. I, I, I'm, I'm done with these vagaries. Well, City Winery is weird. They're like, we have to offer our tickets to our wine subscribers first. Oh, right. they're huh. definitely going to want in. Make sure you offer else. Glass Cannon Live By tickets. By all means. Wouldn't it be funny if we like sold out to the wine subscribers? All the <laughs> 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 Lovers of Merlot were like, I'll take seven, please. Thank you. <laughs> Well, that was uh, funny because we played a comedy club recently and there were a sizable number of people there that had no idea who we were. And it was just funny, like <laughs> watching those people, like trying to figure out what the fuck was going on on stage. <laughs> yeah, we'll be doing that again uh, next month. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the new, uh, have you been to this new comedy club, the new Stand Up New York, Joe? It's in Times Square. No, I'm scheduled to go uh, the week after Kansas City and Austin. I'm, I'm going in to scout the place. Nice. Yeah, that'll be, be like, uh, we're going to have to take a wall down here, uh, move this <laughs> over here. If we're really going to do a glass cannon, well, it's not really glass cannon live, but you know what I'm saying. If yeah. We're going to do a live uh, actual play in this room. So yeah, I'm excited to see it though. Times Square. Yeah. Kong, Skull Island. But tonight we're playing Strange Aeons. I'm really, really excited. I really want to kick this show into gear this year. I want to make some edits. And really push through, get get through this adventure path. I really, really like this adventure path. And as much fun as I have doing it on the road, um, you know, just the sporadicness with which we play it, 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 it loses a little bit. So the more we can get back into these characters, the better. And after we ended Toronto, I was on stage and I was like, I, I have to do this next encounter on Twitch. I have to because I want Kansas City and Austin to have the aftermath of this encounter. And so that's what tonight's going to be. It is a straight up encounter. It's veil lifted. Spoiler alert. This is an encounter. And then we're going home. This might be a 40 minute episode. We'll see. Uh, but I just want to get this out of the way so that we can all digest our food and <laughs> enjoy the rest of the right? shorts Pathfinder 2E fights. Yeah. yeah this <laughs> classic <laughs> shorties. Wait. What if you, is that? Is forty minutes how long you think it will take to TBK us? Because that's the I, that's, case. I, think that's, I mean, to well, me, that's, that could happen quickly. That's the only way it is forty five minutes. If it's forty five minutes, it's because we got wiped like and fast. You keep saying aftermath. And yeah, you're saying it in a really, really negative way. Like yeah. he's like the fallout from this fight, the aftermath. Yeah, I don't like the way you're saying that. I know, I know, but maybe I'm just maybe I'm just getting you nervous for no reason. Maybe this will be a cakewalk, and I'll be watching the the Bruins that I'm taping in like 20 minutes. We'll just be like, this was so much fun hanging out, and while just, people watch just, us hang out, it, it won't be. It'll be. It will. It's going to be horrible. It's That's going to be, be horrible. <laughs> it's going to be horrible. Like I'm, I'm predicting, yeah. horrible. Let's, let's all put our over unders. I think it's going to be horrible. That's yeah. the attitude. Yeah, horrible. <laughs> it's going to be horrible for us, for the audience. I no, think no, he's no, no. lying, and <laughs> what's in the room is actually going to be a friend. Oh. Maybe Big what's in the room Kate's. is the friendships we made along the way. <laughs> yeah. You ever think Basically. about that? Joe? Uh, quick <sighs> recap. I don't have a recap written down because it, it doesn't matter at this point. You have... <laughs> It never, ma it never <laughs> mattered. It never mattered. It's never mattered. It has never mattered for the show anyway. You, <laughs> we're in book four at this point. We have been, you've traveled uh, all the way from an asylum to the city where the Count was, to a boat trip chasing the Count, and you got to the city of uh, Casimir. And now you want to go from Casimir to uh, the, your next stop, as far as you know, is this mysterious library of the occult. Uh, in Kadira, 
uh, in the city of Kathir. But you stop in Casimir first because that's where the boat takes you. And you would have just gone straight to the Mysterium, but you realize that one of Lyle's associates lives in Casimir, someone by the name of Myaknian Mun, this like alchemist friend, this guy that basically helped seemingly make the drugs that put you in a catatonic state so that Laos could put you into the asylum. So this guy is, he's an important character in your lives. Uh, some of you, some of you are just your backup characters. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> it's even more important for uh, Skid's character, Aldo, because in Aldo's backstory, when Laos sort of courted Aldo and saved him from his uh, enslavement by these knoll these Noel slavers, my acne and Mun was there and he remembers seeing him and he was he was like, oh, this guy, he's got some alchemist skills. I think we should bring him in. Uh, he sh you should have this guy come work for you. And Laos was like, all right, Mun, calm down. Uh, so you're like, we got to look into this Mun fellow while we're here and then we'll go to Kadir, which is very, very far away, mind you. Um, so you come to his house, it's this old infirmary. It looks like a haunted house. There's like statues of angels. Um, it was like a prison infirmary that Mun uh, got a good deal on and turned it into his laboratory. You very quickly realize he is not there. He's gone. You find out later that he left with Count Laos to go to the Mysterium. But he left in his uh, stead all of these creatures, these alchemical constructs for the most part, that he created some in his image, uh, these hollow ones uh, that sort of one was really uh, polite, one was really angry, and one was really sad, perhaps showing three different signs of Mun's personality, or perhaps they went haywire and just went like full id in one direction. But uh, there's this other situation going on deep, deep below the infirmary. There are these uh, creatures from the Darklands known as Darrows. And it seems like Mun made some sort of deal with the Darrows to build skins, like kill people and take their skins. And were well, the Darrows going to then wear these skins and walk around town? Good day to you. Just a regular human being walking around Casimir. <laughs> Killed all of them. Stopped that plight. But the whole time... And this goes back to right when you arrived in Casimir, when you talked to the shipbuilder, the guy that talked like this. Uh, Mun was always talking about his anomalous friend. You kept hearing this phrase, his anomalous friend, his anomalous friend, who is an anomalous friend that lives in the attic. So you finally climb the ladder to the attic. And by you, I mean Ethel Merman. Let's go to the map. When you get there, Looks like Atticus is in there too. That's cool. Didn't didn't notice that until just now. You get into the attic, and ivy is everywhere. It's on the walls. It's on the ceiling. It's like this carpet of green. Endless trailing vines flowing in through broken windows and then out again, covering the floor uh, like a living carpet. There's this sickening scent of decay hiding within the scent of fresh vegetation. And you see the skeletal remains of several humanoids lying about this vine-choked room. The attic raises about 10 feet overhead. There are, um, what would you call them? Uh, like beams, support beams. Eaves. Eaves, like, yeah. It's, no. it's like, it looks like there's uh, another section, like a very small section in the eaves up there with these support beams. But there's so many vines up there, you can't even tell. However, Ethel, I can't remember if you rolled a perception check or if you heard something or what, but you look up and you see this creature sitting amongst the... Uh, the, the ivy laying there camouflaged basically but it made a move to attack you how would you describe this it's obviously I have this shitty little uh, pawn that I stole off the internet uh, so it shows a background that doesn't make any sense but uh, <laughs> it's like it's got three legs that are like almost like elephant legs with huge fucking toenails and then its body is this mass of skin and mouths with sharp teeth and then from the body of mouths is just several tentacles flying up into the air and all of this is clinging to the eaves it is it is almost like become the room and it uh it it scares you yeah no kidding <laughs> um you can't speak for him 
question. <laughs> yes. Am I in the room or am I like on the ladder, like having popped my head into the room? You yeah. are right there in the room. Okay. That's how I remember it. <laughs> I remember you- it differently, but I'll go with your <laughs> version. <laughs> um, Joe, you, I'm, I imagine you listened to this just last night. What do you remember? Uh, yeah, unfortunately I didn't. Uh, it's wild because I, I shouldn't have listened to the beginning, but the beginning was so fun. And, uh, I wasted a lot of time on that. I got to about eight <laughs> minutes from the end and ran out of time and had to jump on here. So yeah, I don't know the last couple minutes of exactly what happened, but I seem to remember from the show that Ethel went up, uh, to see, you know, to see what was up there. We had to start somewhere. And Ethel went first, and that, that's what I remember. Yeah, my, that's, my note my note just says, we see a room, or Ethel sees a room of vines and putrid fruit, and we see an enormous mass of tentacles. Yes, so my memory of it as well, Matthew, is that you went up there and you didn't see it at first. You went up there and started looking around, and then maybe I rolled a secret perception, or you rolled it, I can't remember, but there was some sort of perception stealth situation, and then it was revealed to you. Got it. Um, now, Atticus, right. are, you, are you in the room, or is your pawn just, are you just being silly? Uh, I'm not in there. I, I don't know if it's uh, a little glitchy on your end or something. Okay. I'm no, nobody you. else sees me in there, right? I don't no. see it on stream. No. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to reload <clears throat> my John. As you see this monstrosity, and you realize, you're looking up the ceiling, like, what is going on up there? It looks like it's breathing. Oh, my God, what is that thing? Uh... A voice enters not only your mind, but all of your minds. And it is this same strange voice that you heard um, back at the Mad Poets Oasis. A voice that has followed you at different portions of your journey since then. You heard this voice as you approached the door to Mun's infirmary. You heard it elsewhere as you were fighting some of these constructs. Well, yet again, as you see this thing, this voice enters your mind and says, it sends its tendrils through their minds to gather its strength. But despite your knowledge, you are clean. You can't you can stop it that's a big difference <laughs> is, this, is, this, is this a typo if i said you Wait, can't stop it that would be this that? i'm reading from the useless prompter. hold on <laughs> i need my glasses <laughs> you can stop it you did you did say this in the episode at least part of this this voice was in ethel's head in it kansas was. city saying about the yeah. tendrils uh, moving through it's yeah talking about some mysterious it yes uh, yeah don't let it infect this world and serve it to Carcosa so you hear that all of you hear that not just Ethel roll for initiative all right I rolled my initiative using Don Jean in the hotel Jesus. room before the Toronto show. Why? And I, let me guess. Natural 19s <laughs> across the board. I don't know. It has to be in Kansas City. I was listening to you. the... I'm sorry, in um in Toronto. I was listening back to the Toronto show. It's just, just, it's just unbelievable. Like, we, we had a couple super, super high rolls, and you were like 37 initially. Uh, what? I don't believe in luck, but I have fantastic rolling luck. Aldo, what did you get? Uh, 26 for Aldo. 26. Eris. 17. 17 for Eris. Atticus. 31 for Atticus. Very, very good. Sooks Magooks. 25. 25. And I saved you for the end, Matthew, because you looked sad by your initiative. <laughs> it's very sad. It's, it's always sad when you roll single digits in important moments, especially ones that are less than four. Oh, oh. no. I rolled a natural it, uh, three uh, for a 23. Wow, that's that's pretty good. It's a plus twenty. Yeah, to your my, niche. My battlefield surveyor gives me a plus two circumstance bonus to perception. And I was perceiving. Um, I also oh, wait. get what? Can you add two to mine? It's been a while. 
Did you just did you just make up a number and now you <laughs> now you're looking at him like no, it's not that. When Matthew <laughs> mentioned one of his abilities, I always forget Suki has incredible initiative, and I get a plus two bonus to my initiative rolls. I always forget. Always. always. Um, yeah. I also Slap get a free demoralized check. Because I really think I can demoralize this Eldritch Horror, but I could roll a natural twenty, so why not? Why not? Why not bring it up? And does that come during initiative? Remind when me. rolling initiative, demoralize observe. Uh, yeah. Please oh, try to demoralize this <laughs> otherworldly monstrosity. <laughs> Julian, yeah, exactly. This doesn't even okay. make any sense. Uh, I certainly I didn't roll a natural twenty, but it is a thirty-two. Um, and that is against my uh, will to see. That is a fail. Yeah. yeah exactly. Um. That would be funny, though. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't expecting you. Yeah, I also oh. a battle cry, but I'm not observing this foe, so. Cause that is true. Eris frequently demoralizes these eldritch enemies. Yes. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's freaky. I'll have you know I had a plus 23 to my initiative, so I don't have to roll high to go first. Beat a 23. Which is, well, yeah, to beat a 23, I didn't have to roll very high. Um, all right, so. Let's get down to business. Once again, thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us tonight. Thanks for watching live, guys. Things are going to get sound weird. Off and, sound off in chat. What would you like my, my character to be in Kansas City? Oh, no! <laughs> See, that's part of that's the aftermath, fun. Sydney. It's I mean, like, honestly, you'll have like... time to re-roll a new character. Right, right. Of course, of course. A, a lowly shopkeep that Hold works on a in Casimir. I, I, I just want to say... I know I always do this. I do. And like, it could totally go our way if the rolls go our way. But there's a history on these live sort of streams of true Eldritch horrors and tight quarters. And that result is TPK. We have TPK'd against Eldritch horrors in tight quarters before. Yes. It, it, because of AOOs, inabilities to do anything without provoking a creature that has such a high to hit that it hits every time it rolls. And it's it's very, very, very dangerous. That's why I'm like, I'm honestly very scared that we're going to lose major characters in this campaign tonight. You fought in side quest side sesh a, uh, I think it was a spawn of yogg Sathoth. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. That yeah that, that, that's that, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. When we, yeah. I mean, it looked very hey, really similar to this, but it had like a lady's head on top of one of the tentacles. It was we were horrible. a lot of uh, we were a lot of clerics. There was a lot of like it was kind of a funny party kind of thing. But I love that character. Yeah, that a- yeah, it was a great <laughs> character you had, and it, but it, the the point was like. I don't think there was a party that could beat that thing without good rolling on your side. Because it was just like, we didn't even get close. You know, it's not like, ah, oh, if we had a better balanced party. Anyway, I'm nervous. I hate tight quarters. I hate tight quarters. We all, there's also a history of killing Matthew Strange Aeon, Strange Aeon's characters on live streams. It's true. Yes. Uh, uh, it's you true. have the, the most the highest body count of this adventure. Here's what we're going to do first. Let's just get this out of the way. Go ahead and give me a, uh, a save of the will variety Matthew <laughs> because while it's not particularly demoralized by your presence you feel a little scared natural too oh, oh no no, oh, no. Oh, wait do you, have a, bottle, do you have a bottle John do you have a bottle are, are we starting tonight with bottle caps oh you know what I we do start every live cap. show with one each don't we we do um, no not necessarily and they oh, clear out between shows I'm gonna no, say yes. No, no, no. You I'm all saying have it. a show. You all have a show. You all have a cap for going into tonight's session. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, ha- I had one. They reset. They reset. They if you, reset. you yeah, yeah, but but, but usually is. we usually he gives us one at the start of a live show. Here you go, man. If you were here physically, I'd give it to you. But I'm just my hands I'm not going to. I'm not going to use it. I okay. think this is. Just, I think this is going to be more demoralized or frightened or something. So I'm going to risk it. What if for it's panicked? What if? What if it's like he takes? It's actually fine if it's panicked. None of us are there. I survived. Yeah. Yeah. The form has been chosen. He said he's not using it. You are frightened for. Oh. Okay. Um, however, all right. I have bravery. Oh yeah, that's good. So nope. frightened three. Right, Can't frighten by, me. I re- I'm brave. Reduce it by one. I reduce it by one. <laughs> oh, you reduce the 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 frightened by one. All right. Yeah, you don't so poop your pants. You just pee your pants. Exactly. <laughs> Significantly better. I smell brisket. <laughs> um, all right, so you're frightened three then, as opposed to four on a 
critical failure for critical that. Critical failure, dude. And then I will take my turn. Uh, first thing, I, in retrospect, support not using the cap. Thanks, I think Joe. Frightened Three can deal with it. Goes away over time. Cap could could save your life tonight. So, you know, it's this is the thing about playing a frontline fighter. Like when it's great. It's great. <laughs> but when you're just, like, attacked by something like this, you're like, well, guess I can get up to pee whenever I need to tonight. Yeah. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start rolling. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read the chat and start rolling up a new character. That's fun. Call in, everybody. Who should Matthew play next? Bethel? Um, <laughs> Bethel's long-lost sister? All right, so these... Uh, what musical these... theater star's name would you like to see me bastardize <laughs> next? These uh, these tentacles that are that are clinging to the ceiling, one lashes out uh, to attack you, and uh, it is a thirty-six to hit. Hold on, that's a hit, not a crit. It is a crit because of my frightened condition. Oh, exactly. Exactly. right, it is a crit. Oh, exactly. shit! Yes. Oh, I thought actually I thought you were a little higher. Oh boy, my AC is twenty-nine. I'm frightened three. It's twenty-six. Ugh. <laughs> we could okay. be out of here in 40 minutes after that. Oh my god. All right. God. You take 44 points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. First action, the tentacle just shaboom! Second action, it grabs you. Third action, it constricts you. Give me a fortitude save. Just confirming there is no action associated with the frightened force, just the presence of the, presence. the creature. It's an aura. Natural right. 20. Natural oh. 20. All wow. right, so uh, that's a basic fortitude save, so uh, you won't take any damage from yeah, the constraints. And I have, I'm because I'm Holy also shit, dude. That is hardened. huge. That's a bit... It, battle hardened, does that increase your your success one step? Yes. Oh, wow. That's great. Oh, so it... Yeah. Well, I, yeah. So all I need to roll was a success to get a critical success. But I have to roll natural 20, so it felt that much sweeter. That's great. Is that something that's constant, or you have to tick battle hardened now? It is my... As a feat, I have... Wow, that is that is going to come in handy. All right, so you are grabbed by this thing. You are yep. frightened three, and you just took 44 points of damage on a crit. One of its many tentacles is holding you, and it is now Atticus's turn. Ugh, what a disaster. What a horrible character to have to go next. <laughs> <laughs> well, just so far away in a different room. So stupid. Here's what I'm going to say. Uh, the way everyone is positioned is is important in terms of the action economy. I don't want to hamstring you unnecessarily, but uh, since going up the ladder is a climb action, the way I see it is like, I think that I could argue, one could argue that Eris can just get up there in one action, but the rest of you have to move to the ladder and then uh, climb. What I will say, to be fair, is since most See, of you here's only Here's the other thing. Yeah, Sorry, go, go, ahead. Go, go. You know, I was going to say is like, fair. just to be fair, because it is kind of like random where you're standing. If you have movement left over, you could use it at the top of the ladder. You know what I mean? Like if you move 10 feet to the ladder and then use a second action to climb, you can use the rest of your 15 feet up there should you choose. This I mean, thing is taking up the whole ceiling, so it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, we don't have much space to move is the thing, but I guess that's helpful. Yeah, yeah. This is what I don't get. Is like even, even if we were better players, like you still somebody has to go up there first. Yeah. Don't talk to yourselves like that. We also, Some, also, also. I mean, unless did. like what you like materialize through the walls or something. Like, how do you get the party in there together at we're once? We're forgetting too. There are the eaves. There are beams above. So I don't know. Like for instance, Suki could go into an aerial form could fly up as her full movement to oh. land on a beam above and then you know she'll be out of the way for everybody else so it's know, sort of like a platform. but then you but then you need another action to get out of that form you Regar can't do shit in that form regardless yeah. even if i move up there yeah i'm done if i go climb the ladder and then move in the space i can't do any spells anyway right so basically we can just kind of get up there and then we're completely at its mercy and we can do nothing to it this round unless if unless we had single action strikes but we're a bunch of freaking spellcasters. And I mean, obviously, Skid could throw a bomb. But like, all right, so <laughs> Atticus going first is going to try to rely on, uh, he's going to try to rely on invisibility to at least get into that place and not provoke for at least a round. So I am going to go invisible 
And then I'm going- I'm gonna move next to the ladder, so that next round I can move w one action into... in there. Alright. Invisible, next to the ladder. It is Suki's turn. Yeah, I mean, I kind of said that on the whim about go flying up, but I think I might do that. What are you gonna say, Joe? Real quick. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I, I'm gonna put the map back up. I'm just- I'm also producing the stream, so I'm a little slow on the uptake. Apologies. Alright, so... The, the Troy, the guy at the bottom of the ladder, can you just get rid of him? Because that's confusing, and he is not there. He, Hollow Moon is dead. The Hollow Moon de dematerialized. He pulled himself <laughs> apart in, a, in screaming agony. Right. Yeah, so he is not there. Uh, so I think that that could mean, you know, logically, that Eris is actually in that space already. If Eris didn't have to take a move action to get to the ladder or whatever, because he was Fair. not there. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, all right, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, you guys are up. And don't forget Pepsi. And How? don't forget Pepsi. I How could we never, forget Pepsi? I would never forget Pepsi. I think Pepsi could be right next to you. Pepsi is right next to me. Uh, Suki, I don't like him. I, <laughs> I know. You make it abundantly clear every show. Um, Suki is going to cast aerial form. Uh, and she will take... I mean, why not? Oh, you know what? She'll take the form of... No, she'll take the form of hockey. She'll just be hockey. Form of hockey. Hockey. Uh, and she's going to fly up, uh, up the ladder, up the chute, into the attic, and then she's going to fly to one of those beams. Um, and I'm sure she flies up and thinks in her head, oh, shit, oh, fuck, oh, God, oh, no. Uh, uh, and she just flies onto the beam as hockey. Uh... And Is that two actions to go into aerial form, and you know you have enough flight speed and movement to get up, yeah. <laughs> to get up there? There's <laughs> hockey. Oh boy, there's hockey. <laughs> What's that lady? What's happening? <laughs> I'm not that lady. That's not me. They're hockey. You said you turned into hockey. Uh, <laughs> just that's such a good literally. visual pun. Hockey. <laughs> I love hockey. Um, yes, I move. That's my. That's all my actions. I all right. So you fly up. To the eaves. Yeah. Give me a will save. Well, where are you going to put yourself on the map? Yeah, I will give you control of hockey. Oh. Oh, <laughs> that's like, got it. Okay. Uh, all all hockey? The whole, like, hockey. just the all sport right, uh, in general? You said will save? <laughs> yeah, will save as you fly up there and take in this horrible thing. 22. 22? Yeah. That is a critical failure. You are frightened for. Oh. <laughs> Shit. God damn it. I 22 know, is a critical. Matthew's wow. bad luck is Failure. rubbing off on me. I rolled a three. I just had a oh, no. oh. That is one oh, okay. scared hockey. That is the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, <laughs> I get it now. <laughs> uh, okay, and then Pepsi. Took a little while, she got it. Pepsi is <laughs> so going <sweet>. to. <laughs> You're talking to someone who has a signed. Autograph picture <laughs> from the Hanson brothers. <laughs> so the right, so Hanson brothers. You fly up there and you're just like oh, shook by this thing you see. You've never seen anything like this. Maybe in your worst nightmares you haven't seen anything like this. Um, question. Yeah. Pepsi can use one action to either stride or strike. Pepsi can't climb the ladder with its stride action, right? That's, that'd be a separate thing. Um... Yeah, I mean, I, I guess one action Pepsi could climb the ladder. Yeah, it's just, I mean, Skid, Pepsi have you ever seen a snake climb a ladder? Can't happen. Snakes can climb tree. You guys need to stop this disparaging <laughs> snake talk. Snakes are amazing climbers, like amazing climbers. They can climb. They don't have legs. You know what? You make a really fair How do they point. go from rung to rung? I think Pepsi is out of the adventure. <laughs> I am so or first you try to ever. kill Pepsi in the last episode. Now you say a snake can't climb a ladder. This is blasphemous. All right, Pepsi climbs the ladder, but only makes it like one square over from the ladder. Makes it just up to the top, and that's everything that they can do. Okay. So that's Remember that turn. everybody else climbing up the ladder. You got to go past the snake, smoking yep. a cigarette, just yep. casually going rung to rung. <laughs> hey guys, sorry. Only one action. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's uh, Aldo's turn. <laughs> I'll be I'll, I'll be up there in a sec. 
There's another there's another ladder here at the south eastern corner of the room. Is that going up? To the uh southeastern corner. Like south of Ethel. Oh. Yeah, so south of Ethel is another ladder leading up to the eaves. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. In fact, oh, you want to see something sweet? I'm so like in the zone here. If uh old hockey is going to the eaves, look just south of this map, you'll see another map there. Uh, I'm going to put hockey in the eaves. Yeah. Oh. And I'm going to put this thing there too. <laughs> it's uh, everywhere. Well, I guess I'll put hockey there on the eave, sitting on the eave. Okay. Sitting on the eaves. All right, Aldo, what are you? What are you thinking? I don't know. Like he, he, he can't even see what's going on up there. It just probably hears screaming. You hear screeching. And, <laughs> yeah, hawk screeching. Is it sounds awful up there? But I'm, I'm on a bound to I- investigate and help if I can. So he's gonna. I'm gonna try to like. I want to go up. I want to go all the way up to the eaves. I want to like go up to this floor and just keep going. Okay, I think it's safe to say you could do that in three actions. Okay. Yeah, get to the ladder, climb up the ladder. I'm just gonna say you you use your whole round to get up to basically here um, yeah. on the map. That would be like right at the top of the ladder in the eaves. You look across the eaves and you see a hawk just shitting onto the floor. <laughs> um, go ahead and give me a will save. Uh, As you stand well. 10 feet away from hell. Uh, that is a... That's a 26. 26 is a regular failure. Um, Sydney, I made an error. You rolled a 22? 20, yeah. 22 is just a regular failure. So you're frightened too. Oh. Not frightened for. Oh. I, I was looking at the Ooh. wrong DC. I just saw that. Uh, Ooh, and huge then, difference. Skid, your uh, Aldo is frightened too as well. Right. Uh, for this ability, it goes failure is frightened too. Critical failure is frightened for. Jeez. Oh boy. Um, all right. So all three of you are up there and in various states of frightened. It is now Ethel's turn. Ethel, you are caught by this thing. You saw a bird come flying up the ladder, and you saw Aldo, like, rush up, go right next to you, and keep climbing up to the top. Um, I'm just going to uh, fight this thing. I've got, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm grabbed. I'm frightened three. Uh, and so I'm just going to double slice to start. Okay. Okay. Holy shit. Natural 20 on the war. Oh, hammer. yeah. What's up? Oh, Natural oh, dude, 20 dude. on the war hammer. And the Wait, hatchet. Great start. I'm sorry, the kukri. I'm, apparently, I'm wielding the kukri right now. No, that's a mistake. I must have. I'm the, that's a mistake. At the, a certain point, you dropped the hammer. Uh, yes, but you would have so picked it up between up combats. Yeah. Okay, so the, so the hatchet, hatchet whatever is, is a natural seven, so that's only going to be a 25. All right, so the hatchet misses, but the war hammer is obviously a crit. Uh, Joe, give me a. a Fan critical from anywhere on planet Earth. Fan critical coming in hot from anywhere on planet Earth. Uh, <laughs> all right, this one from Foreman in Atlanta, Georgia. I don't know if this is Foreman. Like is this Foreman from, from the, Twitch? From the Twitch? Foreman. Twitch Foreman? Foreman. Foreman. Are you from Atlanta? I can't remember. Foreman twenty three seventeen. Foreman, are you here? You Foreman? son of a bitch. This crit better be good, buddy. If you're here, throw your panties in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh my gosh. Sorry, I just have, uh, all right, here we go. From Foreman in Atlanta, Georgia, Peachy Keen. Sounds good. Your attack moves so fast, (gasps) it sharpens your weapon. Oh. Deal double damage, and your weapon gets, gains a Keen rune for 1d4 rounds. Oh, Oh, shit. This this applies to any weapon category. Wow. 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 So your Warhammer has a expanded crit range. I can't, I don't know if I've read up on Keen I'm looking right now. Uh, They're preternaturally sharp. Attacks with this weapon are a critical hit on a 19 on the die as long as a 19 (laughs) results in a success. Wow. Wow. Yeah, Yeah, baby. Uh, All right, so Matthew, roll a D4, see how many rounds this is going to be keened. 
That's right. a good good crit for yeah, him. That's a good, good one. Crit yeah. for him. Three rounds. Three nice. rounds. Nice. Come on, buddy. That's We're about as long as Ethel's gonna live. So I think that's uh. that's a pretty good result. <laughs> All right, and double damn Zony. So give me that give me that dub damn. That's All peachy right. keen. That's and pretty I roll, keen. Roll once and double everything. Right. That's how we do this. Yes. I don't know why my brain can't retain that information. Uh. Uh, okay. Okay, so that'll be 44 points of damage. Okay. You notice immediately, this is a bludgeoning weapon? It is a bludgeoning weapon. Yeah, it you notice. It is magical, it's plus two. You notice immediately it does not all go through. Okay, well then, that's important because eight points of that was cold. Eight oh. points of that was cold, which would all go through. Yeah. Um, if it I, wasn't. If, if, yeah, didn't have any situation with cold. cold. Okay, yeah. So eight points was cold. The rest was bludgeoning. Yes. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. So you, it 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 hurt, uh, but did not all go through. Your weapon is now keened for three rounds. You have one more attack, or was that? Yeah, I got one more attack. Uh, I mean, I got one more action. Yeah. Um, but I didn't is, hit with both. Is grabbed lowering your chance to hit? Uh, I believe so. Let's, uh, let's anyway, see. Fri- if not, frightened might be. Frightened I don't think it, it does in two e. Frightened is definitely no grab has no effect. Oh. Uh, frightened does though. Grab lowers your AC or something. It makes you off guard. It makes guard. you off guard and immobilized. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna. There's nothing else I can do while I'm grabbed. I mean, I guess I can try to escape, <gasps> right? Could try to escape. Um, Fuck that, dude. Ath- just hit it. Like ath- y- Athletics to escape? Yeah, but uh, it also takes the map and. And you're you know, frightened, I think. You know it's going to have a map. crazy high. Escape has the attack action. Um, yeah. It's, it's going to be, it gets its athletics DC. And <laughs> what do you think this thing's athletics are? Frightened go, is a status penalty to all your checks and DCs, just so you know. Yeah. My athletics is my best my best skill, but I'll just, I'll take the third. I'll take the, uh, oh, you know, you know what I'll do? I you will, can... um, I will battle medicine myself. Oh. Just keep, try to keep me in the fight a little longer. Okay. How bad are you doing already? Uh, I'm down about a third of my hit points. Can you battle medicine your? Can you battle medicine yourself without a free hand? Does it have like? Oh, it it requires a flat check because it has the manipulate trait. So I just rolled the flat check apparently because, so I passed the flat check. (laughs) Okay. Um, and then I'll roll it. And Joe, tell me I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Uh, natural 19 on the uh, on the medicine check. So I rolled better. Um, I think that might be a crit, right, Joe? Let's see. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it would be 4d8 healing, uh, but I, I just don't, you know, it's, oh, oh, you have to be holding a healer's toolkit. I knew it was something. So you, uh, you have to be holding a healer's kit. All right. So uh, it's an action to remove the kit, basically. He can't hold it because he's grabbing And he's got two weapons. He's got a weapon got in each weapons. hand. Right. That all makes right, sense. Well, then I'll just, I'll, all right, I'll just take that back and swing away. Okay. Okay. Uh, almost certainly going to miss, but let's see. Uh, yeah, 23. 23 is a miss, but hey, nice crit. Not too shabaroo. Nice. Not too shabaroo. And I and go down to Frighten too. And you go down to Frighten too. Hey, things are looking up for this squad. Could be worse. Let's finish off the round Could be with too. Eris. Eris, Ethel is in trouble. No. Yeah, I feel like she's the last one to go up the ladder and she just keeps hearing everyone go up there and maybe like just screaming in fear. She's like, maybe that's why she's hesitating on going up. So yeah, first action, go up the ladder, um, pop up right next to Ethel, and I guess- and give me a will gotta, save now that you see this thing. The will she takes save. up the whole ceiling. Wow, these She looks mouths. at it, and that's gonna be a 31. 31 is a success. Nice. nice. She was Huge. mentally prepared to see something so, nuts. It, you are still frightened one, unfortunately, even with a success. Okay. Uh, but that will end uh, soon. Frightened. All right. Um, and now with my next two actions, I want to cast Chilling Darkness. Uh, so I got to roll a spell attack roll. All right. So you just see this thing. You steal yourself against the fear as best you can. And then you cast Chilling Darkness. Darkness. Chilling darkness. Okay, okay, let's see. That's um a 29 to hit. 29 to hit is a miss. Really? Yeah. Okay. 29 to hit is a miss? Or yeah. was, that a, was that a spell attack roll? It was a spell yeah. attack roll, yeah. Okay. What'd you roll on the die? 11. Yeah, so it was about. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah. this is a boss. It's gonna yeah. happen. Yeah. Chilling right, darkness, so... chilling darkness. Yeah, even though she's not afraid, she's maybe using everything she has to not be as frightened, so the spell just like evaporates in her hands and doesn't go off. <sighs> uh, and you just hear Ethel ah, being squeezed by this thing. We go to the top of round two. And it is the creature's turn. You are grabbed by this thing, Ethel. And its body is... Uh, it's it's very uh, amorphous in the way that it like its tentacles come out. It's like constantly undulating and moving. And as you're standing there, a piece of its uh, like body starts edging towards you, and a mouth like unfolds from the skin and puts itself on your body, like the tentacle is pushing you towards the mouth, and the mouth starts uh, like like a lamprey. It, it suctions onto your body and starts like sucking the life out of you. Ugh. Give me a fortitude save. All right, well, fingers crossed here. Natural 20. Oh, oh, oh my god. god. Oh my god. Oh, he stopped right now. Wow. Holy shit. You know what? I'm gonna start lying also. <laughs> I can prove it. I can prove it. Oh my Need god! Need the bathroom wow. cam. Holy oh, crap! Wait, 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 nice. wait, wait! Hold it, hold it, hold nice, it. Nice, nice. Uh, oh, no, wow, I can see it. He's right. Nice, wow. nice. He's right. And wow. You can see all the toddler mess on my floor. Sorry. <laughs> wow. wow. Uh, that is. Uh, <laughs> You've left Troy speechless. That is amazing. I mean, you just you just saved your life. Uh, this mouth, it, it's, it like feeds on you and it pulls back and somehow it didn't get your essence, your life essence and hey, you are okay. That's mine. That's mine. <laughs> All right? <laughs> I don't have much, but that's mine. <laughs> uh, just reading this extra paragraph here. Shout out to uh, Luis uh, Loza who did the uh, conversion of this book uh the the monster in the original is horrible this new version of it it really uh, captures the spirit of the original monster but takes it in a in a really cool new direction and then also i've updated with with the remaster as well so it's just really really fucking cool uh devil to may, play devil may Bri devil may Bree, devil may Bri, uh pointed out his ex-wife already took his essence <laughs> yeah. There's, nothing left. There's nothing left. Nothing left. Yeah. You yeah. took it all. It, you took, they took your wife essence. You, they can at least leave you your life essence. <laughs> um, all right. So then what's going to happen is a tentacle uh, with its final action, a tentacle is going to come out and strike someone else because it has multiple tentacles. Uh, we've got hockey. We've got Aldo and we've got Ethel. One, two, hockey. Three, four, Ethel, excuse me, Eris, four, five, uh, five, six, Aldo. I didn't tell you anything. Um, that is a two. It's coming after Eris. Oh. Eris. Oh. Um, oh question. When yeah. I was frightened in my turn, and when my turn ended, did that go down? You know, I was gonna, I was yes. gonna ask that. I think so. Yeah, like you became okay. frightened at the beginning of your turn, and at the end of your turn, your frightened goes down by one. So. Okay. Um, all right, so this is going to be a straight-up tentacle attack. <sighs> oh, oh, that's, I mean, a guaranteed crit. I mean, absolute rocks. 35 to hit. Not a crit. Definitely yeah. a hit. Not a crit wow. now that I'm not frightened. If I was still frightened, then yes. I'm, oh. so, I'm sorry. The reason I thought it was a crit is because it is. I added wrong. It's, yeah, it's 45. 45 to hit. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> when you said absolute rocks, I was like, that's not 35. Sorry. Come on. I'm sorry, so Kate. Yeah, but I'm also, sorry. hold on a second. Why would you not be frightened? You, you should be frightened one, right? I was at the, at, during my turn, at the end of my turn, it went down. No, but you you succeeded on the roll, right? Mm -hmm. And then I was you were frightened, frightened two. No, I was frightened, frightened one. one. Frightened two is failure. Frightened fail. four is critical failure. Got it, got it. Okay, great. <sighs> Are you ready for this? Sure. You take 52 points of damage. Okay. Suki. What happens? Suki. You just like whips Get me? Get to work. <laughs> I'm a bird. Uh, I know. <laughs> Birds can well, heal. Well, stop being a bird ever. <laughs> <laughs> Except in... God. I'm a fucking druid. What am so I supposed sad. to do? You're supposed to heal everybody, and for whatever reason, birds can't heal shit. Hey, Joe. Hey, Joe. Damage. When your character dies... I really hope you consider coming back as a cleric. That's I all will. I'm going to say. I did my part. Campaign <laughs> did two. I. I, I, I did my duty. 
All right, so these are two crits. Uh, my to hit obviously is decent, but like I'm rolling really well. Uh, 52 points of damage and 44 to Matthew. Just rough start. Rough start. Thank God Matthew's had a couple of crits couple on his of natural end. 20s. Um, huge. I'm still likely going to die. That's the, that's the crazy thing. All, those natural 20s on those saves, and it's still really going to kill me. There may be a fate worse than death. It is Atticus's turn. Uh, okay, Atticus will slip up into the John Jamski. It's time. It's time. Mm -hmm. You're I invisible. Guess. So he's invisible. Um, he will come up into the room, and I think he has enough movement, I guess, to get over by what? Next to Pepsi, right? Like up the ladder and then over. That's fine. Do, That's do your, we care about this? Uh, two actions. Two actions? We'll move up the ladders, climb action, and then you walk. But I thought you said side. you were going to give us the extra movement we have because the ladder's 10 feet. Right. I was just assuming you would use that all in one round. You're like carrying over movement from the previous round. No. I'm saying I started my turn next to the ladder. Right. This this is why I started. I moved last round. I got round you. Yeah, you know, yeah, I let ladder. Eris do it, so it's fine. It's fine. I do need you to roll a will save, though. Yeah. This is where this is the big one. You got decent will, right? I do. But, like, I got to roll decent uh, to get this success, and actually I was loosely basing that off of your fake uh, DC that you gave us earlier. But I still, it still needs to be a pretty decent roll. Mm -hmm. God. And I'm considering bottle capping just because. Oh, thank God! It changes everything. Frightened is horrible for a caster because all your saves go down by that much. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is a good roll, and it will be, apologies, real quick, it will be a 35. 35. 35 is a success, not a critical success. So you're just frightened one, which will end at the end of your turn. Frightened one, which will end at the end of my turn. Yep. Okay. Yes. Frightful two. presence. Frightful presence. Classic. Uh, oh, oh, man. Classic. Yeah. Classic. Frightful presence. Uh, shit. Two actions left. I, I just I hate to to do this with a um, with a penalty to my to my DCs for my saves, but uh, I should uh, also point out now you probably want to go on the offensive here, but among anyone in this party, this creature speaks to you more than anyone. You know what I mean? Like you have. Your media, your Rolodex is like, what? I, I know. I think I know what this is. Or like, if I don't know, there is another mind that knows, that has informed me. Um, just yeah. something to think about. So, yeah, yeah, you're, you're not wrong. I, 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 I'm sitting here trying to think. Because you know what else is like, I've got some spells prepared that are juicy. And they're, uh, like, for example, I'll just tell you, Fireball, Heightened. They're AOEs that would really hurt my allies. I can't get them off in this room. It's brutal. It, uh, so it's painful for me right now looking at this character sheet. I abused that could, spell in Baldur's Gate. And, and then couldn't I'm looking... <laughs> couldn't you set it off in like the far northwestern Look corner? Look at the... Do the math. It hits our allies. It's 20 foot radius. So it's like... Uh. It, even everybody above, oh. everybody below, it hits everybody. The room so is a 20 foot radius. Yeah. It's a 20 foot 20 by 20 square. Yeah. So if I put it in the back corner, you know, it still it hurts everybody. So anyway... And then, and then my other op my other great options are illusions. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'm gonna trick this thing. All right. So, is this your card? <laughs> you know what? I I'm sorry about this, guys. I think people are probably gonna die, but I'm gonna I'll, I'm gonna spend an action recalling knowledge. Now, I have a trinket that a was bottle. from one e. It, it, it didn't cross over. This is my uh, my amulet that is my bonded item. It's my my amulet that hangs around my neck. is an eldritch amulet. This is the key item of the uh, the whatever uh, the, the archetype that I was. Remember, we got yeah. voted like archetypes and stuff like oh, that. This yeah. was my. It was like eldritch eldritch uh, John some, something yeah. eldritch John Eldr uh, wizard, and um, you have this this amulet that acts as your bonded item, and it also gives you. A bonus to uh, to detect aberration and all Elder Mythos Scholar. Elder Mythos Scholar. That was it. And all detect knowledge checks on ab or all recall knowledge checks on aberrations. We never really transitioned that to two each, right? So I don't know if you think that is like a 
plus two on recall knowledge or something like that against aberrations of this of the eldritch uh pantheon i don't know what do you think what, what yeah I'm, do? I'm fine with that give yourself a plus two okay and then occultism right you would say yeah occultism. pretty straightforward and okay. that's your your best one right yeah so tied I, for your best tied for best with arcana i will roll occultism uh, here we, natural 20, dude. Oh. Natural 20 on the recall oh. knowledge that it's an adjusted 44. To, oh my god, this is amazing. Atticus of all people looking at this thing. It's just like, oh, I do not fear you. I know what you are. <laughs> awesome. So, <laughs> in the, the pantheon, of the uh, the outer gods, the elder gods, and whatnot. I mean, there are just so many different ones, and they're while they share so many similarities, uh, they're all different, and they all are kind of like focused on uh, different horrible things. Whether it's a god of chaos, a god of pain, a god of sex, um, you see in this one. Um, something similar to uh, the great old one known as Shub-Nigarath. Shub-Nigarath is... um, (laughs) I mean, I don't even know the best way uh, to describe this. Have you ever heard of this? Have you ever heard of Shub-Nigarath? I have not. The black goat of the woods. Um, uh, they said his, their nickname is the Black Goat of the Woods with a Thousand Young. Uh, it is an outer god in the Cthulhu mythos and, uh, or, or outer goddess in the pantheon. It is a perverse fertility deity said to appear as a hellish cloud-like entity. Oftentimes, these creatures don't make their appearance known in the world, but they infect the world with their spawn. And this is a dark spawn of Shubnikarath. Wow, okay. Well, this is so cool. I'm a huge fan of like Greek and Norse mythology. And so much of it is, you know, like these half breed gods. Like Zeus has, you know, sex with a million women who are mortals. And then there's all these kids running around that are like, half gods and they're terrible they're the worst they're the the worst worst ones (laughs) this is so cool it also reminds me just the way you speak of it troy and and then sydney the way you chime in it reminds me of how sydney you actually own a copy of the last key of solomon the lesser lesser key key of solomon Solomon. and how that is such a big thing in impossible landscapes like you just you hear of these demons that were actually written in these actual books in like the whatever 1500s 1600s and shit and they're so like their names all sound like that and they're always these like the the black goat of the woods is like a total (laughs) like he commands 50 armies and he, you know, yeah, all these yeah. strange sayings about them, like, and they're it's just, it's just crazy. Anyway. As, the, as the outer god of fertility, Shebnugarath is reputed to have a thousand young, but it's possible she has even more than that. Um, and they're just all over the place. Now, how this came into Mun's hands, uh, what effects it may have had on Mun, it's just this is end of the world type shit. If left to its own devices, it would grow and grow and grow. It's possible it started out as just a tiny little larvae and then grew to take on this attic. Hmm. So and that's what you see. So uh, in, in our knowledge as the players, would we hmm. know, like, no matter what, these great old ones, are they evil? Are they, like, chaotic evil, all of them, or...? Yes. It, 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 the easiest answer is yes, but it's almost like what they are is beyond, it's beyond uh, that. A, a con- yeah. a, the concept they don't mean of good us and well. evil. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. Like, like, cat- like categorize- categorizing them as good or evil is assuming that they have any connection to our our concepts of reality or morality. Yeah, that's like, a good point. A god they, is They far transcend that. Yeah. yeah. 
The cults okay, that worship, yeah, the cults that worship Cthulhu and, and all of these guys, like they, in their mind, they want to open up these portals for the gods to come here because they think the gods will then favor them. When oftentimes, like favoring them still means they get obliterated because just to look upon these things is sometimes enough to just, you know, have you deteriorate. Um, so this is just one of its spawn. Um, all right, so horrible stuff. Uh, not so to be what, crass, but for the natural like 20. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Can you two, give you me get some two mechanical? Pieces infor- you get two pieces of information? Two pieces of information. Um, so you tell me what you want to know. Is it resistances? Is it immunities? Is it abilities? Um, man. Um, I would love to know. Uh, Mix and match. Yeah. I mean, are you saying that like immunity or resistances and weaknesses are two different things? That's two different things. Um yeah, let's just say resistances and weaknesses. Or immunities. Or Im- immunities and weaknesses, yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm going to tell you, I'll give you a little bit of each. Um, you got a natural 20, but also this is your jam. So here's what I'm going what I'm to tell you. I'm going to tell you that it's immune to fire. Wow. Oh. Oh. That's a oh, that shit. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. It's on a bunch of vines. It's immune to fire. Be- it's immune to acid. Oh. Um, oh. And okay. you already know that it's resistant to bludgeoning. Uh, yes. It's also resistant to piercing. Oh, so you gotta slash it. Gotta slash. But yeah. I got the keen warhammer now, so I gotta. And further, and, and I will tell you this: further knowledge checks will give you more information. There's oh, plenty oh, to know oh, about more natural twenties. This fellow. No, but you can. <laughs> but you and you can continue to roll now that you succeeded, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. Regular success. Yeah, but you have to get a high, you have to hit a higher DC. Higher DC, which yeah. I cannot do now. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I, I crushed the DC. It doesn't mean I I can't hit a higher DC. Sorry, I, I don't have to roll higher than I did last time. It's just that the DC goes up. Those are two different things. Yeah, big turn there. I know you wanted to lay out some uh, pain, but I think that was the way to go. And yeah, now- no, I agree, and I also think it, it fits with his character really well too, because there's also this 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 idea of like. You know, the other thing I think he would want to know that I sort of, I'm, it's metagaming a little bit, but I, I just was like, it's just not going to happen, is like, you know, can this thing be allied with, right? Like, can you talk this thing into thinking that you'll do its bidding just to save your own life? Because Atticus would do that in a heartbeat if that was like something that he thought was feasible. Uh, but he's not sensing that just now. Um Last action is, oh, this is tricky where I'm with my particular action economy. So uh, maybe I'll just, you know, so I, I got up there in a move. I recalled knowledge and mm, man, I will just attempt to, uh, I'll just attempt to aid Ethel. Um, and I, I'll attempt to uh, aid Ethel, uh, you know, if Ethel attempts to attack the creature essentially by mm-hmm. distracting the creature like being invisible but not attacking it but trying to distract it gotcha um, so uh, a, maybe like a deception check something like that like just to, like make a weird sound or something and and, and deceive it to try to give uh, Ethel an opening okay um, it is Suki's turn hockey uh, all right that's a lot of information okay uh, I Suki is going to dismiss her aerial form hockey. Uh, so I will move. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so Suki now stands up on that beam. And she is then going to look down at the chaos happening below her. Uh, and she looks at Eris and she knows Eris is hurt, but she also knows that Eris is a badass and can handle herself at least a little longer. Hopefully. What do you think, Kate? Gee, thanks. <laughs> so nice. I have faith in I you. Mean, that is such a classic BS argument that a healer makes to just not heal people. Suki looks at Eris. You're so tough. You're just so strong. Gives her a big thumbs up and a wink and then wink. uses her other hand and casts haste on Ethel. Okay. Ooh, okay. okay. All okay. right. So, knowing that he's the damage dealer, uh, it's just, it gives us a little bit of time, and she's just giving you that thumbs up, Eris, and you think that Suki winking at you means she will heal, heal you next round. Can't be I sure. Don't, I is wanna, that what is, I think? This is an actual question. <laughs> Given that I can't move, so long as I'm grabbing, I'm probably not going to escape. Is it at all more, is it more beneficial to give that to, say, Aldo, 
who can keep, who can move, reposition, throw more bombs. All I can do is keep on hitting it, and with a fourth attack, I don't know that I'm going to have that many. You know. That's fair. I just figured with the keen, you know, maybe, but I don't know if if Aldo's actions are your actions considered strikes, Aldo. Um, you know, just by the book, it's oh. kind of tricky. Yeah. You, you, you get and, and Ethel, and Ethel, the thing is, like, it's a range strike. Isn't but being range? grabbed, it doesn't matter in this situation. You, you're in melee with a creature who you're going to stay in melee with anyway. You have no penalty to hit. You know what I mean? It, you just wail away. It, it, it really doesn't. My point was having a fourth attack with the map is not going to be that effective against this creature. I could roll a natural 19 or natural 20. But that is, that is true. That is Suki true. Yell, Suki free action. Suki yells. Who should I haste? <laughs> Anyone? Ethel, right? I I mean, unless you think Aldo, I mean, Skid, you do an attack, right? When you throw a bomb, it's an attack, right? Yeah, it has the attack a, trait, but a is strike, it a strike? A strike can be ranged. A strike You attack is an with attack. a weapon you're wielding or with an unarmed attack targeting one creature within your reach for a melee attack or within range for a range attack. Yeah. Cool. So... Cool. Then I look at Ethel and I realize he looks really bad, like his essence is gone. And I give it to Aldo instead. I cast haste on Aldo uh, and I wink at Eris and I'll heal you next round. Hopefully, fingers crossed. And then Pepsi is going to bite uh, this I, sh I should have Pepsi roll a will save too. Yes, yes, you should. <laughs> if you, you know what else you should do? If he can climb a ladder, he can be afraid. You know what else you should do? <laughs> you jerk. <laughs> how, about, how about attacking Pepsi once in a while? Can, can you just hit Pepsi? <laughs> All right, Pepsi. We'll save. That's Worst thing be... is, if I kill Pepsi, like she just gets another free animal. It's I know it's the best. <laughs> it's the best. 20, Twenty-four. So what am I? Frightened one. Uh, frightened two. Frightened that's two. Fail. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, scared little snake. Yeah, that's fine. You're all shaking right. in your skin. I'm scared, and then it'll go down at the end of my turn. So whatever. So I'm gonna yep. attack. I'm gonna, Pepsi's gonna try to bite one of these tentacles. Okay, uh, now you should know it's it's pretty far up. So, um, uh -oh. it's up on the ceiling. Uh, probably not then, I mean, realistically. Yeah. All right. Yeah, well, you could have him start making his way to the uh, eaves. Yeah. Since he's so adept at ladder travel. I keep forgetting it's like in, in the, the beams. All right, yeah, so instead Pepsi will start slithering up one of the beams. Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 you could make it an argument that he could attack the tentacle that's grabbing Ethel. You know, it's a little like, I guess the snake can stand up and. Up to you. Yeah, no, I don't like it. Okay, so it's gonna. <laughs> he'll move his. He'll use his action to move uh, and stride. Okay. Uh, and make it. Up to the way. eaves, twisting around the eaves, the eaves I like closer it. to the creature. Okay. Um, okay. Can okay. I ask a technical question? I'm, apologies, but uh, so. Uh, Atticus goes up and immediately becomes frightened by this thing. Yeah. Does this frightened condition go down at the end of his turn, or this does it have to wait around for a full turn of frightened before it goes down? We like, talked about this with, with Eris. You succeeded, became frightened one. At the end of your turn, that frightened goes away. So the same turn you walked yeah. in the room. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's how we're ruling it. I don't know if that's correct. We'll, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's tricky. We'll leave that to the professor. But to me, it makes sense. It's like your those conditions tend to go down at the end of your turn. If it happened at the beginning of your turn... That's, that's how I read it. It's not ground-based. It's end of your turn. And just to, to comment on, I think it's Dient or Dlent uh, in chat, you can actually attack a limb being used to grapple by rules as written. Yeah, I don't think Troy's disagreeing with that. I think what you're saying is, like, even that limb is still out of reach of, of uh, the snake. The yeah, ground. if it climbs up Ethel's body and, yeah, maybe I just... Yeah, yeah. It doesn't now, have we're not economy. saying you can't ca attack just that limb as an attack against the creature. Just saying that, like, even that limb is out of reach, right? I yeah. Think if, if Pepsi had the, because oh, he can only do one action when I don't command him as a mature animal companion. So, like, if he had the movement and then could do it, maybe. Yeah. But he can only attack exactly where he's standing. So, yeah, I agree with you, Troy. He needs to find somebody with a bow and arrow. Um, <laughs> if only I had a bow and arrow. If only I had a bow and arrow, you'd be all set. All right, it is Aldo's turn. Aldo, you're hastened. You got a nice. Nice view of this horrible thing, um, but you're a little scared. I'm a little scared. Uh, I think uh, I'm gonna throw a bottled lightning at it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Oh. What is uh, 36 to hit. Ooh, 36 is nice, a hit. Okay, awesome. Ooh, and that is 15 points of electricity damage. 15 points of electricity damage. <laughs> crackle through this horrible creature. Great. And I think it's... Do we think it's... Uh, uh, do we think it's... Vulnerable, or do you think it can be hurt by mental damage? Yeah, um, I was wondering that too because I've got mm-hmm. some mental stuff too, and I was like, I wonder if it doesn't have like a mind in the traditional sense. You know what I mean? It's, it's weird. Yeah. Um, mental and poison are the two things I'm wondering about. Yeah, it's immune to acid. That have that doesn't have a direct connection to poison, but sometimes your brain connects them, but. I don't know. I don't know. You, you, it seems like you could poison it. It's, it doesn't seem like it has a natural toxin that it emits or anything, you know? Right. Um, okay. Well, I'll try it. Uh, I'll throw a... Uh, sorry, you could also spend... One, you're hasted. You could also spend an action to recall knowledge. Yeah, actually, I'll do that. Yeah. I will do a... Can I do Arcana? Yeah, absolutely. Natural 20. Holy oh, shit! shit. Nice. What? God. That is really, really big. <laughs> wow. A lot of 20s flying around here. Um, okay, so it is immune to poison. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Good to know. Um, and that is all of its immunities. Acid, fire, and poison. I'll give you one more uh, piece of information. Mental Juicy damage? weakness. Mental? Weak to mental. Uh, it, it can take mental damage. It okay. is not. Yeah, it is Great. not immune to mental. All right, then I will attempt to throw a dread ampule at it. Awesome, Swirling. a dread ampule at a Cthulian horror. <laughs> <laughs> this is just fantastic. This is not gonna not gonna work. <laughs> yeah, it's a fumble. Oh, oh no. a one or a, just no, a, it's a yeah. All right, so it hits. It hits oh, Ethel. Okay. Uh, and yeah, it just misses twice. Okay. Does, does it do any splash go through? No, because they're both fumbles. So. Oh. Yeah, regular miss to get splash, but fumbles no splashy. All right. Uh, it is Ethel's turn. Okay. Uh, let's do a double slice. I uh, got the old, old hatchet and the warhammer. Old hatchy hatchy uh, okay. warhammer. Not- Neither is a crit, but both are good rolls. Uh, so that will be a uh, 39 on the Warhammer and a 35 on the Hatchet. Wow. Oh, wow. Wow. That's two hits. Nice. Yes. And you didn't roll a natty 19 on that Warhammer. No, it was a natural 18 on the Warhammer. Damn it. Oh, ball sack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. give me the um, Warhammer damage first. Oh, and it is off guard, too. The. Oh, that might crit. It's, it's off guard for the for until my turn starts again. Okay, and it's not a crit still. Thirty nine wasn't a crit. Just checking. Um, okay, uh, so for the warhammer, that's going to be twenty one points of bludgeoning and two nice. points of cold. Uh, twenty one points of bludgeoning and two points of cold. Okay, and then the let me give you the and the hatchet, hatchet is slashing. Hatchet is slashing. Okay, so to your knowledge, all that's box cars. Uh, Wow! Oh, that's on the slashing. Yes, on the slashing. Nineteen points of slashing from the hatchet. Nice. Nineteen from. Wow! Good, good rolls. And now I will flens. Oh! Oh yeah, you will. Yeah. So it, uh, you take one d eight persistent bleed damage per (gasps) weapon damage die of whatever weapons you use that has the most. Okay, so one, so, uh, so it's gonna be two d eight. Damage two d eight bleed. <laughs> All right, remember that on my uh, my end of my turn there. Okay. That is, oh, this is huge. Wait, there's, there's more. There's more. It's now off guard. It was already off guard, and its resistances to any physical damage types are reduced by five. Oh, <laughs> and, until, holy shit, dude! That's huge. Uh, until the beginning of my next turn. Wow. You rolled a nineteen on one of your things. Sorry, I'm half listening because I'm trying to figure out what to do, what to do with my character. Your previous crit, if you roll a nineteen. On one of your oh, no, items. no, I didn't. I rolled a natural 18. He, he rolled an 18. Oh. He got a 39. With the creature off guard, his AC was still 30. 
Damn. So its AC was still 30. So that means its AC is a minimum of 32. That's insane. Um, okay, all right. So it's off guard, still off guard. Um, and that'll be off guard until the end of your turn now? Start. Beginning of my next. Beginning of my turn. All right, so it goes from beginning of Aldo's to beginning of yours now. It's bleeding 2d8, which it'll take on its turn. And also its resistances are all down by five until the beginning of your turn. Just, Holy. And, and just physical. So I imagine like, it doesn't, it doesn't have mental resistance. Bludgeoning and, and piercing. Piercing, would, yeah. Would be a little bit better off. All right, and you still time. got an action. Flange yep. is, is an action, right? Two, two actions for double slice, uh, one action for the flens. Oh, the flens is an action. That's okay. great, hey, dude. That's great. Hell of a turn. You're doing the best you can. Still grabbed by this horrible thing. Uh, and Any chance you're going to let me go? <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is now Eris's turn. All right. So with the spell she tried to cast last round, not working out, not materializing. Um, she's gonna try to cast, well, not try, cast organ sight on the creature. So like in her mind, oh. just kind of like vivisects in front of her and she's trying to find like a vital organ on whatever this is, if she can. Oh my God. Um, so I need to roll a medicine check. Because I cast this, I get a plus two circumstance bonus on it. Um, and... So it's a special me. recall knowledge check using medicine to discern a, fi- a vital organ. You may yeah. not want to look in here. <laughs> um, she's looking. She's looking into okay. the void and hoping it doesn't look back. Um, all right. So do you have the DC? I'll, I'll roll the medicine check. Mm-hmm. Okay. Here we go. Oh, come on. Oh. Um, math. 30... 33. 33 is a success. Nice. All right. So she's huge. not sure what she's looking at, but she thinks she might see something that looks somewhat vital. So she's holding on to that nugget of information for her next turn. Yes. And with her final action, since that was two, she's going to command Egg, which she never usually does because Egg can't oh, really yeah. do much. Um, but she's going to command Egg and just be like, Help me, help, help me. Um, and Egg hops out, and it's like on the ground. Okay. And uses two actions to um, do, what is it called? What is it called? Uh, it, the resorted familiar action. So once a day, Egg can use two actions uh, with the concentrate trait to give up some of its animating energy to heal me. And it must be in my space to do so. Um, so I restore a number of hit points equal to 1d8 times half of my level. So 1d8 uh, says times? That, that's a, Yes, 1d8 times half my level. So that's 1d8 times 5. Wow. Oh, wow. That was more than I thought when I first read it. I was like, wait a second. Wait, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, there's um, egg. Geez. All right, 1d8. Oh, my God. Checking I, chat to see if we're doing uh, this wrong. Do you roll a one? <laughs> do you roll a one? I roll a one. Oh, fuck this dice. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna kill myself. Um, eight points of healing. Sweet. All right, oh, so you, you were able to find some sort of vital organ. Um, I mean, it's not it has doesn't have organs like regular animals, but you see a weak spot, and then you let Egg come out, and Egg heals you for a little bit of healing. Yep, a little bit. Egg's never done this before, so mm-hmm. it's their first time. Not sure what they're doing. Didn't go so well. Didn't go so well. Uh, all right, uh, are you done? Yes, that's all I have. All right, top of the next round. It is the dark young of Shub Nigurath. And, uh, oh man. Is that the actual creature name in the book, The Dark Young of Shibnigaroth? I believe so. That no. is an amazing name for a That's boss. That's a good name. <laughs> <laughs> Dark Young of Shibnigaroth. Uh, okay, so I think I'm going to do something here. I don't know if it's really going to help, though. Please don't take out Pepsi. Just do not take out Pepsi. Yeah, whatever I do, don't take out Pepsi. Don't murder egg. All right, here's what I'm going to do. I am going to... uh, uh, It, it, uh, it like, wriggles 
up there and the room starts to shake and suddenly all the vines that are coming in from the windows growing on the floor they start to like come to life on the ground and all of the flora begins to entangle everyone that is on the ground so that would be Atticus Ethel Eris and Pepsi and egg no Pepsi excuse me egg not Pepsi am I on the ground uh, yes, you're not being pulled up. You're okay. you're still on the ground. Um, so this is the spell uh, in, the, in the remaster. It's called Entangling Flora. P- plants and fungi burst out or quickly grow, entangling creatures. All surfaces in the area are difficult terrain. Each round that a creature starts its turn in the area, it must attempt a reflex save. So just remember that for the, those four people. On a failure, it will take a minus. T- you'll take a minus ten. 10- Uh, foot circumstance penalty to your speeds until you leave the area and on a critical failure it can immobilize you for one round you can attempt to escape to remove either of those effects should you fail the reflex save so So, no no effect on me I'm already immobilized no effect on you but should you get out now you're hampered by uh, this room so yeah and it's maybe could hold us here for something horrible Uh, interesting yeah, so uh, Entangling Floor, the floor comes to life. Uh, what was it called in the uh, legacy version? Was it just Entangle? Now it's Entangling Floor. Um, you're grabbed by all of this, and when just remember to, we have to roll that reflex on your turn. And then I have one action left, and it's going to be a big fucking tentacle. Um, Atticus, are you visible now? No. You're still invisible. You have, oh, because you haven't attacked. All right, so this is just Eris, Ethel, Suki, or Aldo. Oh, shit. We never used my guidance against that against your hit, Ethel, and we could have crit. We could have crit. Oh, How much? Oh, damn it. How, wait, what was it? A plus one or a plus two? It was aid. It was going to aid me. Was I was going to aid. Him. Yeah. I, I think even if with a plus one. Well, plus one would not have crit? Would not have crit, yeah. So okay. don't beat yourself up. Okay. All right, so this one is coming at Suki. Um, all right, so this is... That means is, a minimum of 33 AC. Jeez. This is a tentacle attack on Suki. Uh, that is going to be a 28 to hit. That hits. All right, that was a very bad roll. Yeah, um, I bet which it is, was. I crit on the other one, so... Yeah, but you must have, like, just hit, right? Yeah. Like, just hit. And it's still going to be uh, 29 points of bludgeoning damage. Oh, boy. Wow. Yes. Are Boom. you resistant to bludgeoning by any chance, like it is? Let me check. No. Uh, Let me check. I, no. I'm a woman wearing a white robe. Yeah, this tentacle just comes out and smashes Suki <laughs> off the beam into the wall. And then she lands back on the beam and has the wind knocked out of her. Oh. <gasps> um, all right. That is its turn. It's Atticus's turn. And oh. I'm getting a fresh beer. <laughs> my uh, my poor daughter. She, we're playing uh, softball. And uh, she's just getting into softball, just starting. And we're having a catch. And I bought her, because they recommended it, a face mask. All the girls wear face masks these days. And I'm like, this is just fantastic. Because, like, you have no worry about when you're throwing them the ball about a softball hitting them in the face. Because they're she's only seven. Where's she going to put that glove? Et cetera, et cetera. Well, I threw the ball. She missed it. The glove a little bit too high. It hit her right there. Oh. I mean, I didn't wing it. It was a really light throw. But it just hit her right in the right spot to knock the wind out of her. Oh, and she just solar freaked out. She was like, oh, and she dropped to in her knees and was like, and just got the tears just started streaming down her face. It was so sad. And so I was like, scary. please don't never want to play softball again just because of that. I, I, I promise you, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Uh, it, 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 it had to hit the perfect target to knock the wind out of you, like right in that spot, you mm-hmm. know? Ugh. It is scary. Terrible kid. feeling. Yeah, yeah the first time terrible, that happens. Terrible. Oh, Especially very, when you very don't know feeling. it can happen. Yeah. And you just yeah. think you're just, you just can't breathe. Yeah, first this is it. It's over for me. Or kickball kicked into your stomach and you're just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. This round is sponsored by the official beer of the summer of the Glass Cannon Network every summer. And what's that? Narragansett Del Shandoni. <laughs> there he is. Down? It's Shandoni oh, season. Shand- <laughs> Uh, Oh, Troy. So I got to show you my my beer of the evening. I went to uh, the beer store earlier today. I was like, got to get something special for the John Jamski tonight. They had a four pack. Only one four pack. Never seen it in in my store before. Graffiti Highway. 
The Heady Topper, oh, bro. Heady Topper. Heady Topper. Heady Topper from Vermont, bro. Yeah, they're Alchemist. starting to distribute a little bit more Yeah, loosely. it's a little bit more available. I know I've heard this, but one four-pack, that was all that was there. Straight I just from the can, it. man. Straight it was from the fantastic. Can. Sound off in the chat. What's everybody drinking and eating? You know I love snacks, and you know I love drinks. What are you guys <laughs> sipping on tonight? I kind of need a snack. Seriously, Sydney, I can't believe you've made it like an hour and 40 minutes and, and haven't eaten anything. I, ha- I have been. <laughs> on stream. <laughs> <laughs> you you I, have I, been. I absolutely have been. She was <laughs> eating like chicken wings when we were like getting on before being live, like slightly like plate of wings. Joe, Joe Wait, were they left over from yesterday? Oh yeah. Wow. <laughs> Twenty seven had a meeting yesterday, and, yesterday <laughs> and Sydney was eating wings through the meeting yesterday. What? <laughs> I can't be stopped. I cannot stop. I have a problem. Well yeah, I guess if you call streaming a meeting. Anyway, uh all right, let's all right, Brian, what do you got? Let's Piece dance. Trash. The very same uh amulet which uh, allows Atticus to see through this creature. Uh, just sort of uh, infuses him with this dark, purplish uh, power, which, yeah, I'm just going to say that the way that this force emanates out of him, this barrage is like, it, it, it it is eldritch force is exploding out of him as nine magic missiles shoot forth from him and just shoot, go, 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 into this creature uh, so that I don't have to worry about hitting that fucking AC. So uh, I will spend my level five heightened uh, force barrage in nice. the uh, remaster okay. for nine magic, mis- magic missiles, essentially. Missiles. Okay. Uh, okay, so. Give me that sweet damage. <laughs> uh, not too shabaroo. That is 35. 35 wow. points nice. of force damage just done. And he... And each one has, yeah, this this dark... They're, they're not these bright lights of force. They're this, these dark void blasts that are emanating <laughs> forth from him. Uh, he's going to fight the void with the void. Yeah, skin. Yeah! yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not fast enough. Uh, I wanted to. I wanted to zoom up on your screen. So that's his turn. That's three actions, and now, and now, you're now I am visible. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So boom, lights him up with some force barrage. Suki, you just took a big, <laughs> big tentacle up the head. What do you got? Um. All right, Suki. Uh, it, I have to heal Eris because I gave her a thumbs up and a. You wink. gave me the Ethel. wink. I know. Ethel. What? Don't forget Ethel. I know about Ethel. Suki, is there something in your eye? Please get it out before you try to do something next turn. <laughs> I, I thumbs up and I winked at Eris. I have to heal Eris. Uh, all right, I'm gonna heal. I'm gonna heal Eris. She took a really big hit. Yeah, Joe. Um, what? Well, because he was trying to convince you to heal. That's too bad. Joe can Ethel. play his own character. Yeah. Wow. Uh, <laughs> You are going to I just get... tried to give a pitch for my friend Matthew. That's all. You are That's going all. to yeah, get in, back... In most cases, Sydney, I'd be on your side, but in this case, really? Okay, really? how do <laughs> I really know who my friends are? Free action. Wow. Free action. Love Suki yells fight. out. <laughs> <laughs> Spits up blood. <laughs> who needs healing? Who needs the healing the most? <laughs> I only have one... Well, I've got two big spells, but I could only do so many things. Who needs healing? Uh, while you're while you're figuring that out, I forgot I take my two d eight bleed and then I'll roll oh. a flat check to try and yeah. stop. Oh the my bleeding. god! I was like, yeah. there's no chance I forget that, and I completely forgot. I it. failed the flat check, so I remain bleeding. Matthew, nice. give me the two d eight. Fourteen points of bleed. Ooh. Holy nice. shit! Oh. Hell yeah! Okay. Uh, Ethel, uh. how far are you down? I'm down about fifty points. No, I'm down forty-four. I'm down exactly forty-four. But Eris, didn't you? Didn't Eris get hit for fifty something? Fifty-six. I did, oh, and yeah. then I healed right. eight. All right, help, so, help Eris, help Eris. I have to help Eris. I'm, I'm making my decision. You get back 51. I'm using oh. a fourth level heal. Wow. That's uh, all of it. I reach out both Great. my hands and just beautiful blue light uh, heals Eris. And then I'm going to command Pepsi as my one remaining action. And Pepsi is going to chomp chomp now that he is up on the beam. Okay. Uh, so Pepsi is going to chomp. That's gonna be, no, 26? No, that's a miss. Okay, jump again, just to see for shits and gigs. Sure. (gasps) 
Nat 20. Oh, yeah. natural. For shits and wow. gigs is right. Way. <laughs> I am shitting and gigging. That's the shit and gigs you're, you're freaking talking about. Wow. Uh, that's a, uh, yeah, this 31. dumb snake. All right, so a 31 <laughs> wouldn't be a hit, so it is actually not. It is not a crit. It is a hit. It is just a hit. Uh, so regular damage, no fan of my crit. life. <laughs> Damn it, that would have been really cool if it was that a crit. Been, that I don't even been get phenomenal. exploding dice or Wait, anything. You know what? Because it's off guard, that is a crit. Yeah, yes. there you go. Yes. <laughs> give so, me the crit, Joe. Give, give me, me a crit. Give me your named crit. From anywhere on the planet. <laughs> this dumb uh, snake. A named crit from anywhere somebody on, on this planet? <laughs> anywhere where snakes exist. <laughs> anywhere where snakes is, exist. All right, let's no crits go. from Ireland. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, do, 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 do. This one from Lee in Charlotte, North Carolina. Lee, Lee, Lee in Charlotte, Lee, North Carolina. Lee, 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 this one is called Show Them How It's Done. Yeah. Your display of textbook form and precision inspires your allies. Uh, double damage. All allies within 30 feet who have line of sight to you have their critical ranges increased for all attacks. <laughs> By one for one D4 rounds. Oh, shit. Yes. Wow. What does critical range mean? It means that it, it means that, like, up? you crit on a natural 19. Okay. So and, for, and a natural 20. So for Ethel, it would now go to 18. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now go to 18 for, like, one more Roll round or something. Oh, oh, my God. God. Awesome. This makes sense. Pepsi is inspiring. Pepsi hit for once. Inspiring <laughs> yeah. every fact ally. That Pepsi hit this fucking thing. <laughs> this makes a ton of sense. You're right. You take. And you're all like, wow, that snake is amazing. You I, still have uh, your resistances reduced right now, right? Yeah, resistance or half because it's piercing damage for the snake. Yeah, piercing damage. So 34 piercing damage. Wow. Okay. Jesus Christ. Doubles. That I does not sound like an animal that gets shot on an arrow. <laughs> 34 <laughs> points of damage on a Pepsi, single bite? Pepsi was a baby wow. back then, and Pepsi's grown up. Wow, 34 points of damage. Its resistances yep. are halved, so uh, you know it's 29 points of damage. I had piercing 10. Oh, wow. So 29 <laughs> points of damage, and uh, now, <laughs> roll a D, now roll a D4. Oh, wait, why? How many for rounds how many is rounds everyone around? everybody's keen oh, for every oh. attack? Three. Yeah. Three. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's so huge. So basically, for the rest of the night. <laughs> Let's go! So, so now Ethel's going to be a crit on an eighteen to twenty, and the rest of you will crit on nineteen. Only on the warhammer. Only on the warhammer. Only on the warhammer. If you, uh, if you, uh, if you are roll doing a spell attack roll for our attack spell casters. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Uh, amazing. 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 And it is now Aldo's turn. Um, so am I? I'm still off guard till the beginning of Ethel's, Ethel's turn. Now. Yeah. Oh right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Then I am no longer frightened. I am going to throw another bottle of lightning. Okay. <laughs> Natural 20. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh God. <laughs> I was saying, if we go this, this way, was a lie. if we roll like this, no this one, is our only chance. If this people think live in like a venue, it would be... Pandemonium. Yeah, insane. this would be Florida. insane. <laughs> Troy, you made yeah. a huge mistake not having this happen. <laughs> I know. Like this is like in Kansas City. City. It's crazy. Yeah. This you know what? I'm going to Kansas City for this range. If I were well, you know what? Well, this City, is, we'll, so upset. Th we'll redo it in Kansas City. Just like, <laughs> we'll just we'll do, run it back. Again. do the exact same stuff, pretending we never did it. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> other podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to do do doom. Uh, sorry. Um, okay. Can't believe these crits. Uh, all right, this one from Tom in Atlanta, Georgia. What up, Tom? By the way, you know Tom. Tom. That's PJ Love Sauce. Uh, That's PJ, PJ Love Sauce. Uh, PJ Love Sauce. What's up, else? Tom? Tom in Atlanta. Right in the dot, dot, dot. You fill it in with your imagination. Penis. Double damage, and your target must make a fortitude save. Ooh. Okay. I'm sure you're going to make it. But hold on, but the DC of the fortitude save is gonna, well, it'll be your class DC, uh, Aldo. So, you know, whatever that is, 30. Thir I, I roll a 38, so I'm okay on the fortitude as you assume, but double yes, damage. Yes, and there is no benefit to the six, to if you succeed. So, All right. just double damage. Just double damage. But if you failed, this would be huge. Slowed one. Oh, that would, oh, that be would have been huge. That would have been great. If it, if it would have failed. But there's no chance it would have failed. 
Almost. Uh, no chance. That is uh, 20 points of damage. 20 points of damage. Okay. Couple things. Going back to Atticus's turn. Atticus, I forgot to have you roll the um, reflex save to see uh, if you would right. be entangled oh, right. or if, it, if I fumble something. Immobilized. Happens. So if you fumble immobilized, I don't think you would have been able to get those magic missiles off if you're immobilized. Yeah, you it's not, it's not immobilized does not affect your ability to attack. Yeah, okay. it, it doesn't affect the, somatic components. The main thing, no, the main thing you have to point out is if this spell gives you the grabbed condition. Yeah. Okay, That's so you what, just can't do anything with the move trait. The it move doesn't trait. affect, yeah. Okay, so it doesn't really matter. You didn't move, so don't even worry about it. Cause uh, and I ended up, yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, and Skid, you said how many points of damage? 20? Uh, 20 points of damage, and it is. it w- will be flat-footed now until the start of my next turn again. Okay, and or that, off guard. that 20 points of damage, uh, that's what kind of damage? Is Electricity. That? Electricity, okay. Yeah. Great, first attack, 20 points of damage. Beautiful. Uh, Good start. Uh, great. I'm going to throw a follow up with another dread ampule. Moderate. Natural 20 again. Stop <laughs> it. You guys. <laughs> Holy three shit. Three natural Stop. 20s. Hold Same on, Skip. Die? Put that up there. Put Same that up die? there. Three nat 20s. <laughs> there it is. It's proof. Oh my the die, God. Has, the die has a 20. That, that's unbelievable. I mean, even Skid seems a little sad. He's like, I'm sorry, Troy. You're my friend. Uh, hold on a second. Is this? Uh, Holy shit! Is that? Is that a? Would that result in a hit? That natural twenty with the map. That's the only thing we got to figure uh, out. That would be a thirty-four against its oh. off guard. I see. Yeah, it's that's wow. a crit. Holy shit! So wow. we're pulling another one. I mean, you guys are inspired. Pepsi yeah. Yeah. has yeah. inspired you. Okay, your projectile was guided by the gods. Or I'm oh, sorry, this one from Brandon in uh, Macon, Georgia. Macon, Georgia. May- Macon. <laughs> I've never heard of it. M-A-C-O-N? Macon. Macon. Does Macon. everybody know Macon? It's Macon. 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 Like, yeah. I have never heard of that city. Macon like Bacon. Wow. Sydney, you know this city in Georgia? Never heard of Macon, but uh, I would love to go there. Sounds great. All so right. You guys from, have never heard of Macon, Georgia? I, no, I've never, never heard, heard Macon, the term Macon, Georgia in my life. Georgia, the, you, uh, you two are the only ones. Macon Georgia. like Macon. Joe, that's wow. crazy. Macon, Georgia. Uh, arrow of light. Your projectile was guided by the gods or touched by the heavens as it strikes your target's armor before en- entering them, causing a great flash of light. Oh, fuck. Are you going to get screwed here? Uh, doom. Normal damage, sadly. But. Oh. Uh, oh. Okay, so it's normal damage, but the target is blinded for 1d3 rounds. Oh. It explodes in a burst of light. Ooh. Oh, that's happens. awesome. That's perfect. So it's normal damage, but you are blinded. No save. And then it says every enemy within a 15-foot radius must roll a will save to see if any of them become blinded. But there's there's no other enemies. Oh, wow. But yeah, cool. it's just straight up, boom, it explodes in a flash of light. <laughs> imbued by the gods, apparently. Nice, Brandon. Awesome. From Macon, Georgia. <laughs> All right, sweet. Give me the, the uh, Georgia. It's <laughs> give me the regular damage. Uh, fourteen points of damage. Okay. And I'm off guard. I'm still bleeding. You have one more action. However, at that moment, you crit on the first bomb. You crit on the second bomb. At that moment, it starts to shake and quiver, and you guys hear crack, 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 split, 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 split. And the entire ceiling comes crashing oh, down no. to the floor. A couple things are going to happen. First thing that's going to happen is uh, Suki, Aldo, and Pepsi all take five points of damage from the 10 foot fall. And now everyone roll a reflex save as boards and bodies are flying down everywhere, and you're all in this entangling flora. Um. Do I even get that? Because I am immobilized from being grabbed by it. Do you even get I the mean, reflex save? I don't see why not. Like you can, a yeah, reflex save can also mean you just put your hands over your head, you block, if it's damage right, related. Right, and know. also probably grabbed, you're not immobilized, you're just grabbed. I'm immo- that, grab, grab gives you the immobilized. Trick. Okay, then that's probably affecting your reflex save. No? That was a good point, let me look. No, it does not. No. Yeah, I, I mean, it's reflex does explicit. not always require movement. Sometimes it's just dodging your head one yeah. way or another. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, pieces of bits and shit are falling down from the ceiling. Uh, all right, it's uh, DC fifteen. Oh, 
<laughs> Did anybody who who failed or critically failed or who succeeded? I or critically failed? succeeded. Oh, I critically succeeded. Um, Reg- I actually regulars. have to roll for egg. Yes, and egg regular also success critically succeeded. What was the DC? Fifteen. Fifteen. Critically succeeded. Oh yeah. no! Critical success. Critical success. All right. Oh, so nice. Ethel, Egg, and Eris critically succeed. Joe. Uh, critical Atticus, success. Critical. Suki. I rolled a one, but I succeeded with the amount roll. Like, wait. Yeah. So then you just a fail. It's not so a critical. So it's a regular fail. fail. Yeah. Oh, because you rolled a one, but with but the I bonus, it, it would have been have a, a success. Yeah, a plus All right, so 16. it's a regular success. All right, so you're going to take uh, nine points of damage from this debris. Well, it's, a, then, it's a regular fail, what she got. Yeah, and then it, Aldo? Uh, I got 37. 30, sorry, so you don't, you guys, you don't take any damage except Suki. However, Pepsi, Aldo, Pretty. and Suki are also prone. Oh, okay. And Pepsi critically succeeded, just so we know. Great. Um, um, but yeah, you, you, uh, Aldo, Pepsi, and Suki take damage five points of damage from the fall, and then Suki takes extra damage from the debris. The rest of you don't take any damage from the debris, but Aldo, Suki, and Pepsi are pro. Uh, and then, Aldo, you have one more action. Holy shit. What Two a more. round. Two more. Yeah. Two more. If he, wants to, if he wants to stride or strike. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll stand up. Oh, yeah, there you go. And yeah. uh, then throw... Throw a third bomb. Third bomb, 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 bomb. That's bomb. amazing. Oh, natural one. Oh. oh. Okay. Well, the uh. dice gods. The dice gods said, "All right, that's enough." All skip. right, that's enough. That's <laughs> enough out of you. Uh, okay. Do 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 do. Um. All right, this one from M in. Oh, geez. Sorry, we used this a little too early. M Sorry. in Austin, Texas. I We're am. about to head I to am. Austin. Oh, am. what's up, M? Uh, this one is <laughs> appropriately titled for you, Skid. Winning time. <laughs> oh my God, it actually is. Winning time. Deal half damage to yourself unless, if you can name a professional sports player who wore a jersey number equal to the damage, <laughs> take no damage. Oh wow! <laughs> All right, so what's half damage? So what's half damage? So roll damage. What's half damage? And what? What do we give him? Five uh, seconds. Of course, Skid gets this. Yeah. <laughs> This is so funny. Uh, 12. <laughs> so that's half damage? No, no, no. That, that half would be six. All right, okay. so six. Uh, all right, you got 10 seconds to name, name an athlete. athlete uh, Walter Davis, University of North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> wow, even amazing. amazing. <laughs> Number six, <laughs> yep, Walter Davis. <laughs> <laughs> Troy double checked you. I love it. Uh, amazing. All right, so you don't take any damage? Is that what it was? Uh, yeah, unless you name that sports player. Yeah, so amazing. no damage. You're fine. Right. Awesome. Nice kid. That's, All just, right, that's so, just fun. And now, uh, how many rounds am I blinded? It's uh, how many D3s? We had to roll a 1D3. All right, so you, it's good. It was three. You, you rolled... <laughs> No, Sydney, you, roll? you Sydney rolled it. I remember you made. No, Sydney it, it's skid. That was it's, different. It's, it's skid. It was skid. skid. Oh, we never, we never actually yeah, rolled skid. it. Yeah, so skid. Roll Sydney's uh, uh, Pepsi's keen for all of us. Yeah. Was fair. Uh, one have, round. I have dice tracking. Uh, one one round. round. All right, so I'm gonna have to roll flat checks to hit you. Um, from yeah, now so on. everybody's gonna be essentially hidden to you. Is is, is what it is right now. Is that DC ten or, or excuse me, is that DC ten or five? DC eleven. Excuse me. Yeah, eleven. Uh, DC 11 flat check, right? Unless I use perception, uh, use an action to try and figure out where you are. Okay, wow. Guys are pulling this off, but the ceiling has caved in and you actually see a uh, a treasure chest has fallen to the ground that was sitting in the eaves. It's just like boom, boom. I saw it, it's on the map. The ground. It's on the map. You can see it there in the eaves. Uh, oh. as, as the beams have fallen, uh, that chest Wait, has fallen Wait, you can see it the in the eaves? Yeah. yeah oh, it. right there. I never noticed it. Oh. Oh, oh wow. It was camouflaged was amongst the eaves. Shout out to Davy Maps throwing oh, a little dude. chest. Is this <laughs> Davy Maps? Davy Maps. Wow. Wow. Fucking Davy Maps, dude. Yeah. Uh, you guys right. got to use Davy Maps for your home games, for real. Ethel, you are up. You are still grabbed by this guy, but it has not slowed down your offense. Uh, no. Okay. And your so, Warhammer now crits on an 18. Yeah, for only the Warhammer. 19 on the on the hatchet. But I am gonna. I'm doing a double slice. I'm just gonna keep. Keep hacking at it. Might as well. It's like, you know, this thing's got we wrapped in a tentacle, and Ethel's just kind of like slamming both weapons down at the tentacle, like over and over and over, and, ho- and attempts to hurt it. I love it. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> I rolled two natural twos. Oh! oh. At least they're not ones. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> oh, good call, not healing Ethel. Yeah. That's a 
That's going to be a 24 <laughs> and a 22. Okay, miss, so, miss. Oh, miss. Yeah. Um, oh. and, and then I'll just, for the heck of it, I'm going to roll one more attack. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, with the map, that'll be a 25, so even... Miss, 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 miss. Uh, keep in mind that entangling floor is still going for everyone. It really is only going to affect you if you try to move, um, but you could be immobilized, which uh, would affect anything with the move trait. Like, you know, just if, if it affects you, we should just have you roll the reflex save to see. Yeah, yeah. Um, but for you, it doesn't really matter. All right, so that's Ethel, and then we finish the round out with Eris. Eris, you've seen a vital spot on this thing. You brought your old buddy Egg out, uh, and then the ceiling collapsed. Have we All also right. talked about your amazing uh, neck mouth? Ooh. Wearing oh, the yes. neck mouth tonight. Yeah, this was made by Charlotte, living bread girl on Instagram. Gave it to me in LA. It's, it's like real it's shark teeth. So it's really well made. It's real shark teeth? Yeah. <laughs> you ever just real rock leather. that on the weekends out of the club? <laughs> <laughs> oh. If somebody gave Kate some hacky shit, she would never wear it on air. Like, oh, yeah. it would have to be It's got to be stuff. quality if you want yeah, Kate, Kate to wear it. Kate is like fine taste. You guys said fine that, taste. not me. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so... I see what looks like an organ or something that will hurt it if I hit it. So is there anything in the room? You said um, it doesn't take a penalty or it, it's not like immune in any way to slashing damage. Right. Should be good right. for slashing. Is there anything like in the room that I can chuck at it that does slashing damage, like a thorn from one of the vines or something? Oh, I mean, just be careful if you're talking about, uh, are you talking about um, te telekinetic yes. projectile? Uh, I feel like, yeah, it's bludgeoning. It's just always bludgeoning. No. So I, I had the same thought. Oh, I was no, like, no. It says if you hit, you deal 6d6 bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing damage. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Yeah. It says range damage 66b. That's all it says. And oh. then in the description, you're right. It says bludgeoning, piercing, yeah. or I, slashing. I specifically took organ sight to work with this. <laughs> yeah, I was when. just looking at the summary, and it only says bludgeoning in the summary. <laughs> Wow. So I was like, I can't use this. Wow. Worst Amazing. summary ever. Amazing. Um, <laughs> um, just before I forget, just for shits and give, the, give me a reflex save for all this entangling floor. Let's see if it affects you at all. I, I don't think it's going to make a big difference. Even if I'm not moving? Yeah, because you could be immobilized, which would affect things with the move trait, which, again, you may not use, but... A reflex save. That's a 26. 26. All right, so that's a fail, but you're just, if you decide to move, you have a minus 10 to your speed. Didn't plan on moving this Yeah. Round. All so. right, so, yeah, I'm, there's, there's, there's plenty of stuff you could use to slash. There's, like, uh, nails that have come down from the beams you could suck yeah. out of the wood. And shards of the beam. Yeah, shards yeah, of the beam. Yeah, like, yeah. A, beam shards. the splinter from the beam, I see it. Totally. And I reach out, and I just try to f magically fling it in a slashing motion at All this right, creature, it, at that organ. It's uh, off guard, and you crit on a 19. Come on. And it's oh blind. God. Yeah. Uh, it's a 23. Oh, I have a bottle cap. Fuck it. I'm using it. Wow. So I love it. So we roll it. Bold. So no, bold. Yeah. All right. That's better. Um, 9, 10, 11. That's a 31 to hit. Uh, it's off guard to everyone, right, Skid? Yes. And that is a hit. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. All right. So that means I deal 66, but then also oh. with my. Um, organ site, I deal an extra 4d6 precision damage. Yes. Oh, so wow. let's roll the 66 first. Holy shit. Yes. Oh, man. So 10d6. Uh, so that's 21 initially, and then the extra. So uh, 21 slashing, and then um, this is 11 precision. Holy shit. Wow. What, an, uh, what a great yes. <laughs> oh, nice job, Eris. Your damage was exactly what you hit with. It was 32. You hit. You rolled a 32 to hit, wow. and you did 32 damage. Sydney's Angel numbers. That. Angel nice, numbers. Nice, yeah. clean. That's, That's a beautiful mind shit right there, Sydney. Yeah. Damn. You That's guys, me doing math. That's crazy. Your... <laughs> How can you do math for me? Um, um, do you guys see you this? You can't add six plus four, but you can just throw, <laughs> throw out. <laughs> can you bring up the uh, map real quick? I want to see if it says it for you guys that Suki and Egg are on top of each other. It just says, suck egg. Yeah. <laughs> Suck it, that's, what, that's what she's saying to this creature. It's oh my god! Egg. Suck it, egg. The hand that I landed on egg with my mouth open. So he's just like. Right. Ah. So yeah, so like awesome. uh, obviously technically that can't happen, but you know we're in a weird situation. Is egg technically small by the book? Um, you—they are small. Um, how small? 
Just um, literally small is like a, a definition of size in the game. They are tiny. They're oh, tiny, they're tiny, so they tiny. can yeah. share a space. They're they can yeah. share that space. That's awesome. They're sharing yeah. my space right now. Um, Basically, because of the room, if not, like, Aldo would shift over and everyone else would shift. Like, you get pushed to the nearest uh, yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, but we could, uh, I could share a square with it because of, of my, like, yes. rat folk ancestral ability. Uh, I can share a square with it, but it can't be a medium size, just smaller than that, but um, awesome. All right, so that was two actions. It's always so great when that works, the, the organ sight and telekinetic. Yeah, yeah that's um, awesome. a good setup. With my last action, I want to use a focus spell to cast Needle of Vengeance on the big baddie. Um, and when I cast this, I say Ethel's name. I go, stop trying to suck on his face. <laughs> Gross <laughs> thing. Um, and basically... Um, you make a will save, so maybe this won't even work. So m- make a basic will save. All right, save. so high risk, high reward. Um, I will roll a will save, and I got a 33. Um, regular success. Of Larry Bird. Um, and I think that only affects the damage, because basically if you make any... Um, a, a needle jabs into your psyche whenever you try to attack Ethel... Um, you take 10 mental damage any time. Yeah, so y- you don't roll With the a- save now. You roll the save when you attack, if you attack Ethel, and it's a oh, basic save. So okay. if you succeed, you would take five damage. If you fail, you'd take 10. If you critically fail, you'd take 20, etc. And this lasts for one minute. Okay. All right, so keep, keep that in mind when it comes back around to you. Uh, is the top of the next round, and it is the Dark Young's turn. Now, casting spells while blind, like targeted spells while blinded. I'm trying to like figure this out. There's no flat check for that. You just can't do it because you, you can't don't do have- You because you don't have line of sight. You don't have line of sight, right. Um, so you'd have to go AOE or- You can't detect anything using vision, and since you need to target a spell with vision, you can't can't cast it. Yeah, I mean, unless this creature has an impre- has a precise sense outside of sight, right? Like if it, <sighs> right? If it has a magical sense that is not sight and and is precise, Ooh, it does. But I don't know if this particular one will make like, a difference. Is it like tremor sense? It or is something tremor like that? sense. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if tremor sense is it well, a precise sense. It's you gain. Uh, I think pre- I think tremor sense is an imprecise sense. I think it? it is too. Yeah. Um. I'm trying to game the system as well. A tremor sense allows a creature to feel the vibrations through a saw. It's usually an impre- usually an imprecise sense with a limited range. Tremor sense functions only if the detecting creature is on the same surface as the subject, which you all are, and only if uh, the subject is moving along or burring through the sur- surface. Uh, blind it is, you can't detect anything using vision. You automatically fail perception checks, and if vision is your only precise sense, you take a minus four penalty to perception checks. Yeah, I mean... Hold on a second. Was this thing tied up in the rafters, and then it all collapsed, and yeah. it's now on the floor? Like, it fell too? Yeah, it fell too. Okay, so it's like uh. scrambling around on the ground right next to us. Okay. Yeah, well, it... <laughs> yeah, it basically, like, it has freedom of movement, so it can just fucking... It, it's not hampered by anything in here. Yeah. It, it had basically become the room. Yeah. And in my mind, with the tremor sense, like all these vines and everything that it's been living in, it, it can feel every sim, single bump. So here's how I'm going to rule it. I'm going to rule it that my flat checks go down to a DC 6 instead of a DC 11 because of tremor sense. Um, but I still don't think I can cast spells without being able to physically like you mean dc5 instead of dc11 yeah excuse me dc5 so instead of 11 the creatures are concealed to you rather than hidden yeah and that's what you, i'm gonna do that's uh, how i'm gonna rule but that would only sense. be for hitting with tentacles right right what, yeah but i just don't i mean i want to i want to be able to cast a spell with trim like using tremor sense but i just don't think i can i think i need to be able to see you, even though this fucking thing doesn't even i agree have eyes. i think i think you should have to see us too i think that you know if you had an aoe fire it off yeah. you know but like even yeah. even like a, even like a line spell be fine mm-hmm. but you know if it's targeting a creature i think by the book you have to have line of sight or a precise sense that isn't sight yeah right. yeah. yeah that's how that's how i'm gonna do it um aldo this is because of your natural 20 
yeah, yeah your I mean, natural that, yeah. 20 has completely changed uh, sort of its its end game here as it comes down to the floor. So here's what it's going to do. It has three actions. It's still holding uh, Eris. So I am going to... Sorry, I, I'll just say real quick, the Ed Robinson in chat, I went to chat to check, says it yeah. would say Tremor Sense Precise if it's precise. It, it would say it in this creature stat block in parentheses next to Tremor Sense. It would say yeah. Tremor Sense Precise. Gotcha. Um, well, this was like made by a friend, so it's <laughs> it's not as like by the book, you know what I mean? But the creature um, was made up, like, I'm sorry, the creature was crafted, like it's not in any... I don't e. think it's been up. Uh, I don't think it exists for two e yet. I could be wrong. Oh, I know there's dude, a just one e. Precise. I know there's a one. Yeah, what there's a one e version. Shut up. <laughs> just stop Shut talking. Up. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I'm just looking at the. Uh... <laughs> yeah, like I, I wish I had like all around vision. I mean, to me, I, I think I'm being generous by giving it uh, the DC five because it, it can feel Very everything generous. in this room, and you guys are right because next tremor to tremor sense it. really only applies when we move, and nobody has moved. Mm. No, but like that whole the all these vines and stuff that are moving that it's controlling yeah. it, they're like coming out of its mind. Anyways, I'm I'm gonna leave the basically. DC there's no way to say that it doesn't have a mo like more advantage on that attack than you or I if we were. There's blind. only one square you know I mean? in the it room. Has to have some better advantage. There's only one square in the room that doesn't have an enemy. <laughs> that doesn't have an enemy to it, like the one between Atticus and Aldo. Yeah. Um, all right. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna see who it's gonna come after here. It's still holding Ethel. Um, but I want to I wanna lay the smack down. Aldo is standing. Suki is laying down. Pepsi is laying down. Um, all right. One, two, three, four, five. Here we go. Roll to six. I will re-roll. Six. Uh, Eris. No. Oh, she got healed. We're good. She yeah. got healed. True. All right, so here's what happens. First, the tentacle comes at you. <laughs> okay. I wish I was shitting you. Natural 20. Oh, oh my God. Natural Lies. 20 on this beautiful die that I got from a fan forever ago. This thing only rolls 19s and 20s. Natural 20. 20. There's the most natural 20s in this episode. That's your flat check. Oh, oh, that's right. oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> You're right. No, no, it's not me. Really not me. It's the chat. The chat lit up with flat check. That's flat amazing. Check. That's so true. I can't. I can't. I can't. There's nothing I can do. Holy. Two bottle caps. Two bottle caps. Wow. That's amazing, Matthew. If that was you, I was going to give you a bottle it's cap. It's not me. I just, oh. I just saw it in the chat. Let me still crit on a fucking eighteen. I think I passed away. Oh my uh, god. Holy shit, that's amazing. Okay. Uh, all right, I'm probably still going to crit here. It is a uh, 45. Yeah, dude. Okay. 46 AC. I just don't get a fan crit. All right, here we go. Uh, first, we're going to do the damage, which is going to be horrific. That's so funny. Yeah, uh, Ukini Chan says amazing that he nat 20s the flat check on Kate. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Needle of vengeance. <laughs> Needle of vengeance. <laughs> All right, so you're going to take 56 bludgeoning damage. All right. I've never I been happier. Gave, I just well. gave <laughs> <laughs> That's right. amazing. 56 bludgeoning damage. Second action, it's going to grab you. Okay. Third action, it's going to constrict you. Oh, shit. So give me a... Uh, a save on the constrict fortitude. is fortitude save. So I'm grabbed. Okay, add that and fortitude save. Um, that's a 28. That's a fail. So you'll okay. take regular damage, which is going to be, you're going to take another 20 points of bludgeoning damage. Oh, man. So that's over 70 points of damage. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and you're still up. Yes? Yes, yes. Okay. All right, so this thing has Eris grabbed and is squeezing the life out of it. And you see, out of this blob in its body, another mouth unfolding and making its way oh, no. towards Eris. And, and since thing. Eris is so happy, she's like, if this wasn't killing me, it would be hot. <laughs> right up Harris's alley. Uh, okay. God, I got so many tabs here. 
It is Atticus's turn. Atticus, let's start with the reflex save just for posterity's sake. Uh, the reflex save, you say? Mm-hmm. Uh, 34. Okay, you're fine. Okay, so he's he's fine. Um, and I am so tortured freak. whether to put the die in your hand or in mine. God. Okay. Um... Oh, wait. I take bleed damage, and I got to roll the flat check. You, you do not take bleed damage. The okay. effect the effect from the flensing strike ends. Both effects, both the uh, reductions to the your resistances yeah, and Ethel's the bleed turn. ends at the beginning of my turn. So gotcha. No- All right, so it's just off guard until the beginning of Aldo's turn. Very interesting. I'm going to go ape shit here for a second. Okay. It's about time. Angling just to the back of the room keeping, of course, my friend Eris out of the worst parts of it. (laughs) Atticus is going to cast a howling blizzard. Cone. Cone of cold. Into the creature. (laughs) Nice. Full cone of cold, and I'm going to hope and pray that your worst reflex, your worst save is your reflex save. Okay. Uh, so go ahead and give me a reflex save. Big old creature. Reflex save. <sighs> I'm sick. Here we go. Let me look at my reflex. Right now. It's pretty good. Okay. It's a very good roll. Shit. It's just a matter of whether it's going to be a critical success or a regular success. Uh, uh, 34. 34 is a regular success. Okay. okay. A little bit of damn zony. Bummer. It's Bummer. getting cold in here. It's getting uh, cold in here. I'll tell you what you just told me is that your reflex save is your lowest save. You just you just gave that away. Did I? Because, well, yeah. You said that was a very good roll and you barely passed. So, like, that wasn't even close to a critical success. So... Uh, if you would have failed, amazing, but you, you succeeded, so that's going to be 14 points of cold damage. Is that all you got? Well, it's a shitty, shitty damage roll. I got one six out of 10 d6s and oh, uh, no fives, so that was pretty bad. Um, but you take 14 points of cold. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to enact an ability I have not yet enacted, I don't believe. Uh, I don't think so. At 10th level, I'm going to enact. Uh, a new feat that I got at this level, quickened casting. Mm. If the next action is to cast a wizard spell at least two ranks lower than your maximum spell rank, reduce the actions to cast it by one. Oh. Whoa. With cool. my last action, I'm going to cast a one action lightning bolt oh. through the middle oh. of you. Awesome. So, whoa, cone of cold, and then he pulls back in, and then, dang! And an electric bolt goes through you. Another reflex save, if you please. Oh. Oh, I failed. Oh, oh, oh. Get the yes. fuck out of here. Yes. Get right out of here. Uh, 24. That is a failure. That yes. is a failure. Uh, oh, my God, dude. It worked out. It worked out. I rolled on 4d12. 3. 11, 12, 10. Oh. Wow. 36 points of electricity damage. Wow. Rick through this creature. <laughs> oh my God. I was trying to decide if I should do a lower magic missile and just get some guaranteed damage or let you roll the die. And uh, holy shit, that adds up to way more than I could have done with holy magic missile. Holy wow. shit, That's awesome. you light I have, this I have thing been up. corrected in chat. You, the bleed continues. The two effects that last until the beginning of the turn are flat check, or the, the off guard, and the resistance is the reduction to resistance. So the bleed does continue. You do need to roll another flat. You, check. you okay. have to, so, yeah. You have to solve your own bleed. I guess makes All sense. Right. Yeah. Natty eighteen on the flat check. Give me the two d eight damage. You take an additional seven seven points of bleed. Okay, seven points of bleed, and then and then you're clean. Uh, you're clean. And then anyway, yeah. So that was fourteen points cold, thirty six points lightning. 50 points of damage! That uh, quickened casting is only once a day. I can do that once a day. That's well, awesome. this is the time to do it. No reason to hold Metamagic on to that. Feet. Yeah, exactly. It's a classic metamagic feat from yeah. 1E. <laughs> it now goes to Suki's turn. Okay. Ugh. Suki uh, with a side of Pepsi. 
Suki is going to, she's prone on the ground, uh, but she rolls her head over and sees Eris's uh, dainty ankles. And Suki's just gonna reach her arm out uh, uh, and grab Eris's ankle and do a touch fifth level heal. Woo. Uh, okay, Woo. you are gonna get back. Huge. 68 points. Oh, wow. Holy shit. I mean, where you fell. Wow. It's the only way you could have been done that. There's no other way to move about the room. Oh, that's almost full. That helps oh. so much. I was like wow. 34 hit points left. If like it hit me again, I might die. Like wow. so sorry, Ethel, but I mean It's okay. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I knew who and my holy then. shit. <laughs> then that was only one action because I was able to be in range to touch Eris. So as a two action, John, I then cast, suddenly you see Suki's body like just stiffen, like on the ground, like a board, like she's having a seizure almost. And then ching, 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 her whole body just changes into these sharp, jagged, metallic pieces. And I cast elemental form and I am a metal elemental who is nice. lying on the ground because I don't have enough actions to stand up. Wow. <laughs> so it's awesome. Wow. wow. Nothing sadder than a, me a metal element, a lying prone. <laughs> Super cool looking robot that slipped on a banana peel, basically. Holy shit. All right, so you turned into a metal elemental yeah. Mookie. Hey yeah, so, and, and I mean, isn't this new? Like, I feel like this didn't exist when Suki was created as a character. It was Rage the thing we did in Rage of Elements, and right? came in of Rage of Elements. Yeah, the the, yeah. the plane, the plane of metal. It's so cool. Yeah, metal it's, as an element. It's just but don't it's you so have to fun. be a very specific type of druid to become metal? I mean, isn't there the anathema? Isn't the anathema coming to play here? All right, you know what? Yeah, Matthew, I think, you sound like Joe. Can you just give it a rest? <laughs> I do yeah, like I don't Joe. think God, druids, what you've done to me. Nobody <laughs> likes a joke. Give it a rest. <laughs> that is completely anathema to be a metal druid. <laughs> <to ruin. laughs> it's, it's, it's it's horrible. It's, you make a really good point. I don't really know what. I don't know. It doesn't give you like a- I, I know you don't know because it's it sort of, it's all lumped in there. It gives you access to everything, but like- I'm so curious now. I will have to look into that Colin. separately. In the meantime, it is Aldo's turn. No, it's Pepsi's just gonna oh, take, it, Pepsi's just gonna, oh wait. Yeah, Pepsi's, Pepsi's gonna stand prone. up. You know what? <laughs> Pepsi's Pepsi, always prone. Pepsi's I know. Pepsi lives yeah. prone. It's, it's so, back. That's the whole it's point. It's so <laughs> dumb. All right, Pepsi rolls over. <laughs> And now he's not prone, so good that's Pepsi. his turn, I guess. Okay, good turn, Pepsi. Yeah. Chad is also saying they got rid of metal, metal anathema for druids in the remaster. That uh, makes a lot of sense. That's right. Thank you, Chad. So it's awesome still and not bad. It says, and they did it through story. Doc said, you know, Doc Robotnik says, since the reopening of the plane of metal was unsealed, druids no longer have that as anathema. It's almost na a natural element now. That's yes, cool. I love really that. Cool. I love that. Yeah, it's like uh, chunks of sharp iron ore, you know, just like are on her body now. It's so cool. It's very, very cool. It is Aldo's turn. Uh, okay. I think the, unfortunately, this haste is kind of wasted on me. Uh, well, everyone I'm, made me do it, so you better well, freaking no, use actually, it, Skid. <laughs> haste is just generally, it's worse than it was in 1E because Agreed. it's For like sure. in 1E, oh. you just get a bonus, full bonus attack action. Yeah. Everybody does. Every, yeah. yeah, everyone does. And now it's one person and it's just worse. It's like you get one more useless attack action unless you have other like kind of- I mean, in this fight too, do. with a monster that is taking up most of the tiny room. Yeah, and then like it would yeah. help if, if, it's like you if you could move around. More. If yeah. we had to move around or whatever, it would be, it would be yeah. different. But. Uh, okay. Um, so I'm just gonna throw another uh, ball of lightning. Okay. Dude. This thing has to be so close. It has to be so fucking close to dead. It has to be. Come on. I would like to watch the end of the Nuggets game. <laughs> nope. Not tonight. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll throw another one. Uh, okay. That is... That's a 31. Is it still off guard or does the no, off guard go away? Be, the off guard goes away at the beginning of my turn. Okay, so that is a miss. But it does take five points of electricity damage. Well, five splasher. That didn't happen to be a natural 19 on your second attack, no. did it? Okay. <sighs> and uh, yeah, I'll go again, I guess. Actually, I'll throw the, uh, the Dread Amp Pool again. Um, five, points, five more points of mental splash damage. 
Ah, my brain. And, uh... <laughs> oh, ow! I'll throw, actually, I'll throw the bottle lightning with my last attack, just in case I get a natural 20. Uh, I don't, but it, you take another five points of electricity splash damage. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty clutch, just to give a little more chip, chip, chip roof where that's your buddies what, can come in strong. That is exactly why I thought the haste would be beneficial to you, because at the very least, it's an extra free five points of damage. Except it's like, with this guy, I'm more than likely going to fumble with that last attack, which I'm not even uh, you know, going to bother taking, in which case it wouldn't take anything. So. Well, in this case, you got an extra 15 points of uh, damage there on those splashes. And now it's Ethel's turn. Ethel, you're grabbed, and so is your lady lover. Yes. A situation we've been in in a slightly different configuration, perhaps, before. Um, Gross. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right, this is my last round of having both the uh, the the keen on the double keen on my warhammer. Um, so may, let's make it count, shall that we? Mouth, I'm no longer frightened, though. That That's a good mouth thing. is opening up and getting closer and closer oh, to Eris. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh shit! Natural what? 18 on the warhammer. Oh, oh my God! You did it! Yes! You what? did it! Yes! Matthew! Warhammer is the metal die. Wow, shit. Oh my wow. god, that's awesome. Um, that okay. is amazing. Wow. That so is that, amazing. Uh, and it would be a 30, uh, no, 41 to hit on the Warhammer, just to confirm. Yeah, that's a that's double damage. That's <laughs> and, <it's> a, uh, <laughs> and 20, uh, 30, 34 to hit on the hatchet. Uh, also a hit. Nice. <laughs> oh my god, yes. it's Troy. I can yes. crit, double damage, and then also a hit. Oh. Troy, enjoy the Nuggets game. <laughs> <laughs> I taped the bees, man. Tape the bees. So watch that right after. 58 points of damage from the Warhammer. <laughs> uh, of that 12, of that 12 is cold. And then from the hatchet uh, is going to be 17 points of slashing damage from the hatchet. Okay. And then I will flens. Got a flens. Got a flens. So you are now off guard. Your resistances are reduced by five, and uh, you'll take a new persistent 2d8 bleed on your turn. Nice. The, let me lift the old veil here. <laughs> <laughs> lift, lift away. This fucking thing can cast a six level spell, which used to be called one thing, but is now called Nevermind. That, show, that spell used to be called Feeble Mind. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, my God. I was saving it, waiting. And that's why when I went blinded, I lost it. Oh. Okay? Never mind. If you critically f fail on it, you're an NPC. Yep. Yeah. Until someone can remove that curse. And removing curses isn't what it used to be. Skidness. A lot more yeah, like... That would have been Galabras all over again. Skidness. Yeah. Oh so God. I went to plan B. Plan B is, after you grab someone, you can use two actions for this sucking maw, which if you fail on sucking maw, every time you fail, you get enfeebled. You critically fail, oh you God. get enfeebled too. Once you get to enfebled four, you roll against Nevermind. Wow. So if it this sucks, is just like, it's wow. so that's why Troy knew from the jump how huge it was that you rolled natural 20s on those fortitude saves. Like, yeah. That's yeah, unbelievable. because I would have just kept sucking you, and once I got down to Enfeebled 4, you oh. roll against Nevermind. <laughs> yeah. You roll against Nevermind, you, Ethel's a vegetable. Yeah, and you also wouldn't have, you would not have hit as much. Your Enfeebled is going to yeah. directly yeah. impact your to, to hit rolls. Yeah. And what is your will save, Eris? My will save is a plus 18. Yeah, I mean, so you were toast. It's DC 32. Um, so, like... Oh, I, I would have got you probably to Enfeebled 1 on this next round, maybe Enfeebled 2. It was going to get ugly, but instead, Ethel killed it. Oh. Yeah! <laughs> Man, yes. he is the best money Aldo and I have ever spent. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that Ethel. The tentacle releases from Eris's neck, and she's like, oh, 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 my God. Oh, Ethel. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. That was good. <laughs> that was good. Holy shit. I looked into the I looked into the maw. I saw some things. In actuality, it wasn't that bad compared to what's up here. But I saw some things. <laughs> Suki sits up. You hear clang, clang, clang. Suki sits up, and her head, her metal head, just turns like 180. <laughs> 
What happened? <laughs> Forgot <Whoa. your> metal. <laughs> it's, Is it's it over. dead now? It's over. Lower bang, your bang, voice. Bang, bang, bang. It's over. <laughs> Fuck. <sighs> <sighs> I want... I wanted to do that. <laughs> God damn it. Clang, clang, clang. This thing is just like, it, it just shudders from Ethel's blows and then releases Ethel and Eris who fall to the floor of the floor and it just lets out one last like uh, vocalized sound that is from another world. And like, as it does so, words like flood your mind words that are, don't even like they don't go together it's just like crying out in a million voices all at once and you hear this like barrage of like <laughs> you almost have to like steel yourself against it and then it stops breathing and crouched like laying like in its folds is this broken chest that has fallen from the ceiling. Oh. Oh. Open it. Yeah. A- Atticus walks like directly up to the chest. I, I would <laughs> it's so funny. I like I wanted to limp because that felt exhausting, but he never took a point of damage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he comes up to the chest and uh, and immediately tries to open it if it isn't locked. Looks like it was locked, but from the fall, it split open so easily that you can just what secrets pop do you it hide open. here? Oh, were you guarding Mun's most prized possessions? Let's see what we find. First thing you find is a canvas small pouch. You open up the pouch, and there are six diamonds inside. Nice. Ooh each worth 250 gold pieces. Whoa. Whoa. Holy Whoa. shit. Six diamonds, each really? worth 250 gold pieces. You then open up a leather bag that has 2,500 gold pieces. Oh, my, oh God. my God. God. And, and then there are three pieces of paper. You open up the first one. I'm so glad I asked for that raise before we came up here. <laughs> I, I don't recall that. Aldo, do you? Uh, I don't remember that conversation. No, this is son of a bitch. No. You open uh, up the go first. On. You open up the first one, <laughs> and it's the deed to the infirmary. Oh, okay. You open up the, you open up the second one, and it says that you've all leveled up. Oh, oh my god! Yes. And, you, and you open up the third one. And it says, we'll fucking see you in Kansas City. Yeah, yeah, baby, you know it, you know it. Oh, my God, Thank you, Nate. We live to see another city. Thank you, everybody. This This is so awesome. (laughs) Thank you for hanging out, McDee. Thank you for doing this again. We got to do this again. It was just too good. It was just too good. We'll see you soon. We got to go. We'll see you in Kansas City. Just a quick 20-minute combat. (laughs) 